the tea is spilling. I can't guarantee. I know where it's going to drop. <laughs> all right. Please, in my how mouth. Are, how are you doing, Oliver? Everybody go. Everybody go. going on y'all hi good afternoon is it no it's evening now it's evening now you know what i think i'm gonna log hold on let's do this right fast hey y'all can y'all hear me can y'all hear and see me has to put the thing on do not disturb right fast can you guys hear me can i be heard i just had some cereal no, not cereal. I had um, carrots and um, a piece of cheese, and it was really good. Hey, guys. Can you guys hear me? It's 4 p.m. in California. I need to buy my ticket to L.A., or I'm not going to go. If I don't buy it today, I was supposed to fly out tomorrow, but I think I may fly out Friday. Oh, you guys can hear me. Dope. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know. Let me see something. Is Hannah Cat Jones? I think that is such an amazing name. Hannah Cat Jones. Hannah Cat Jones. Oh, thank you so much. I stand you too. Hannah Cat Jones. <laughs> Y'all. I got on this thing. I was chewing. Hi, my friends at the Gabers Agency. What's the tea? I had some string bean, carrot, and um, cheese before I got on. And I just knew by the time I hit the live button, all the remnants, artifacts, and particles will be gone out of my mouth. But girl, I'm just, every time I go to say something, it's just steady, like, coming up in my mouth. Pause. Did I get my nails done? No, y'all. These are my same nails I got done two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. These are the same nails from two, officially, it's been now two weeks. I am gagged. Remember I told y'all, oh, I'm supposed to be doing top model chat. See, my brain finna get, but remember I told y'all the last time I went, she put something on top of my nail. She said, look here, mama, it's going to get real hot when you put your hand back in the thing. But I put something different on there that may keep the white a little bit longer. And I remember when I put my hand inside of the thing, girl, it felt like Satan's pussy fell down on my fingertips. It was so much fire and heat on my nail. I said, girl, I listen, but she said, it's all right. Put it back in there. It'll go off for the next three seconds. I put it back in there. I said, oh, this is burning me. Lord, please forgive me for my sins. And then I brought it back out and it was done, but it's still white. So clearly she knew something. Clearly she knew something. Anyways, y'all, what's going on? My name is Oliver Twix, your nerd boy cutie reporting for duty. Here to do the Lord's work. What was the guy? And today... We are talking to Hannah Cat Jones. I think that is such a pussy name. Oh my goodness. It just screams femininity and head bitch in, <gasps> head bitch in charge. What? Head bitch in charge. What? Head bitch in charge. Hannah Cat Jones from Cycle 16 of America's Next Top Model. I don't know if I've gone on record saying this. But Cycle 16 honestly had the strongest group of girls. Cycle 6 is waving very vigorously and, and they may could contend, but Cycle 16 girls are just bomb. Cycle 16 girls were so bomb. Like each and any one of them could have won easily. Honestly. 
from the girl who went home first to the bitch who walked out last, Miss Brittany Klein, the queen, Brittany Klein, either one of them could have won, like anybody could have won. But we are so excited to talk to Hannah Catchones from Cycle 6. No, y'all, this is Cycle 16. Oh, y'all just named the other side. Cause I'm like, don't be confusing me. Don't be confusing me. And I'm so excited she said yes, of course, because we're here and I'm so excited to talk to her, to meet her and ask her the questions about the things with the things. So without further ado, <gasps> Miss Hannah Cat Jones. Whoa. Hi, Hannah. Hi. How Hi. are you? I'm great. I was loving your nail story. I have felt God, I, I have felt the devil's burn on my nails before too <laughs> it can be really really uh intense like guys don't know what girls go through and that's just your nails like have you ever gotten your have you ever gotten it waxed on there you don't want to say the word hannah well i don't know what like that region like it's not because it's is it your i would you're not gonna get your your pee pee wax. <laughs> but like, you know that area? Like, have you ever gotten that? Like, it's so painful. Um, I've, but... never, I've never gotten it waxed. I've <laughs> only, um, I've only, ugh, I only get it nared. I nair it myself. Oh. I know, right? Fun fact. I nair my, oh my, um, my, my, my crayon box. That's like the OG <laughs> laser away. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I near my crayon box and my pencil sharpener. <laughs> <laughs> I love that your crayon box. That's what that's area that area is called. Now I know. Mm hmm Mine's kinda like a triangle. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna get it waxed. I have a lot of friends who have waxing places. They're like, come lay on my table. They're just like, I don't know how I feel about you ripping hair. <gasps> That's close oh my to my vagina. I don't know. Oliver, it hurts so good. Mm -mm. It hurts so good. <laughs> yeah. It, you you get you get kind of like, I don't know, after like that initial and then <laughs> and then she's like, just breathe. They'll talk mm -hmm. you through it. You hold your breath. Wait, I think you hold your breath in. And then when they rip it, you let your breath out. And then they put their hand on it and it's so like soothing that it ends up being a great time <laughs> and afterwards you're just so smooth for weeks I'll you know what I'm going I, but I would have to go with somebody somebody has to come with me because I just I'll go with you really I with you in Atlanta yes I love Atlanta I love the market there and uh just like all of the culture and the street art and mm -hmm. the food last time I was there I stayed downtown and it's so much fun I love I love Atlanta so it's official. The first time I go get my crayon case checked out, Hannah is going to hold my hand. We could do another live video or something. That would be so fun. <laughs> Let's go get our lashes done, too. Oh, now that's fun. I don't mind. Yeah. You know what? I've actually never gone and got my lashes done. I just have, like, Me when neither. I get makeup done, I have them put, you know, the little strip on, but I've never actually right. gotten them done. Yeah, and they do all different colors and sparkles. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. <laughs> Anna, Anna, you are making me smile so much, and it's, we've only been five minutes in on this thing. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm so glad you finally pinned me down and helped me find a day that worked. I am like all over the place. Like obviously, it's just it's really hard to like find a day to just sit still for mm -hmm. a second. Well, that's good. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me and my friends. We greatly appreciate it. You're so cute. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Listen, have you seen any of my other Cycle 16 chats with some of your past friends? I have not caught them. Are they on YouTube? Yeah, they talk so bad about you, girl. Uh, of course, they're jealous. I think I think Molly said you were a bitch. I think Kasha oh said gosh. your feet stink. I think oh Monique gosh, said, crazy. Monique said, you run your mouth all the goddamn, I'm just playing, I'm just That's playing. true. I will, <laughs> I'm, I'm really bad at keeping secrets. <laughs> I was like the devil's advocate on the show, which was so funny because everybody thought I was totally harmless. And mm -hmm. then I would, I remember at one point there was a towel incident and it shows the drama for like a split second, but Alexandria had taken somebody's towel and I was sitting in the bathtub and like the cameras are always around. 
the only place that the cameras were not allowed in the house was in the toilet area, like right where the bath, but the bathroom door even was like glazed. It wasn't completely, uh, what's the word, solid. Like you could actually see a little bit through it. So um, for anybody who's never been on reality TV, you have absolutely no privacy. And I'll tell you, whenever we uh, were mic'd, we were allowed to talk. But even if we weren't mic'd and the cameras were still rolling, we were not allowed to talk. And if, if you talked when the cameras weren't on or you weren't mic'd, then they would take away your phone privileges and um, basically make you cry. <laughs> Did that ever happen to you? I was only allowed to talk to my parents or family or contact the outside world for 15 minutes and the entire time that I was on the show. And that might have been three to four months. I can't really remember. It was like we were gone from October until December. So it must have been only like two and a half months of filming. Mm -hmm. um, but it went by like such a, you know, my life completely changed after that. You know, I'd never really been modeling before. So going on the show was uh, very, very exciting, but also terrifying because I was basically lying the whole time. Like I was lying about knowing what I was doing. You know, like, like uh, Alexandria came from LA where she had been modeling ever since she was, you know, she just grew up in the industry. Same with Kasha, I think. Uh, I know Nicole had been, had an agent and, and Dahlia. So uh, going up against some of these girls who have so much confidence and then Britney's walk. Oh my God. Brittany I Klein. Knew, I knew you were going to say it. Everybody talks about her walk. Her walk. I mean, there was no lie. Now, one of the girls, if she had not quit the show, I thought she was going to win. And I can't remember her name, but something horrible had happened to her right before she got on the show. She lost both oh. of her brothers. Mm -hmm. Do you remember her name? Andre. Yes, she was gorgeous. And I totally thought she had it in the back. Like, I totally. So I don't know if you remember this. Do you remember the first episode when they tricked us? Mm -hmm. I spoke to some of those girls. Yep. That was so mean. And like the way that they should, <laughs> like, have you ever been in a competition, like whether it was football or basketball or drag or cheerleading or whatever, you know what I mean? Like whatever competition where you want to win so bad. And before you even get to compete, they say, actually, you don't make the cut. You're terrible. You're going home tomorrow. Go get your luggage. And then the other girl or the other people who want it, who uh, who are just you know they rubbed it in our face they were like haha losers I mean from the very beginning it was always there was always some sort of cat fight or uh you know remark behind the camera like you mm -hmm. only see the things that they edit you don't hear what the producers ask you the type of questions like uh you know a lot of people are like was uh Alexandria really a bitch I think she had great bitch energy, head bitch in charge. You know what I mean? She had awesome bitch energy. And I like, I would say that to her face. Like, I think, yeah, I totally think Alexandria was a bitch. She was a badass bitch, you know, same with Molly. Molly like stood up for herself. I totally respected that, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm jumping all over the place. No, you're fine. We, we're we in Jalea. We're in Jalea. I mean, I love talking about the show too, because it was such a wish it's such a dream of mine when I was a kid and I think that's why I got so upset so easily on the show because I did care you know Cared like it was crazy it was so mind-blowing and like one thing that I think the reason why I didn't win or didn't get top two is because um I didn't have a story like Brittany was from a trailer park her mom was agoraphobic she was had an amazing walk so that you know it just all lined up for Molly, she had been adopted at birth and, like, really didn't have a good relationship with her real mom. Mm -hmm. Looked like Kate Moss, she right? Did. Like, Molly mm -hmm. is amazingly gorgeous. She is so okay? pretty. And so then there's me. <laughs> I have pigtails. <laughs> I'm, like, a little, like, not completely there all the time. I mm. messed up the coffee the first morning that the real girls who got in the house were actually in the house, I messed up the coffee and we had to wake up so early. You said you That's messed it up? Oh my gosh. Well, like, okay, at the time I was 20. I was not 21 yet. 
Okay, so anytime I had partied, it had been illegally up until this okay. point, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm in this house with some of the girls are 25, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, Kasha, by the way, was 30. So she's actually 40 now. <laughs> okay, so I was in the house. And it was early. And at this point, I had never made coffee on my own before. And we all needed coffee. That's the other thing. You don't know the call times. Mm -hmm. You have to wake up so early. Mm -hmm. Babe, sometimes it's like 5 in the morning. Mm -hmm. 4 30 no, in the morning. Oh no, and I believe it. And so I got up and I um, put the coffee where the water was supposed to go. And I put the water where the coffee was supposed to go. And then I put the filter, I think inside it was bad <laughs> and so i messed up the first cup and i realized it because i woke up like I, i'm an early riser so i realized i'd messed it up and then i remember okay that's not right and so then i put the water in the jar and then the coffee in the right place with the filter because i figured that part out and i turned it on and then I messed up the second cup too. Oh so, yeah, the second. So Molly really didn't like me right off the bat. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> "What is she?" I, I remember hearing Molly and Monique going, "She fucking messed up the coffee." And the other thing too is, I think, uh, did you know we had to take a personality test like the week that they were choosing the final thirteen girls? Yeah, I think I think that's kind of standard each cycle. Like they make you guys do like a bunch of tests. Did they make you? Did they draw your blood? Uh, I don't remember that, but one of the girls said that that happened. Um, and that the other thing too is like the first week, you are in complete isolation unless you're talking to producers. So all the girls have their own hotel room, and none of us are allowed to talk to each other. No microphones, no cameras. They're like, if you talk, you're not going on the show. They're mm -hmm. not gonna, you know. So th it basically like the rules were so strict because we knew that if we didn't follow them, they could easily send us home. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that first week, I remember taking a person in, they, the first thing I did, I showed up in LA, got on a bus with all the other girls from LAX, the airport, I had gotten ready in the airport, you know, because I wanted it, the makeup to be fresh and everything. Mm -hmm. And then they, I get to the hotel, they take away our cell phones, and they record, they film the shot of you walking, like, all hopeful and excited, like the first scene. And then they start like shit got real, real fast. What happened? Okay, so uh, we had to sit around, wait for lunch, nothing happened, we're sitting around, and they're just like, you're just waiting for all the girls to arrive mm -hmm. from the Hurry airplane. Hurry up and wait. And they're, and they're filling, yeah, they're, so they're filming everything. And then, I mean, this was a week-long thing, so I didn't even know if the personality test was on Monday, but it literally felt like you were take, taking like the SATs or standardized tests of some sort. Yeah, I was like, this mm -hmm. sucks. And so some of the questions in this, in this test were like, do you hear voices in your head? Do you think about uh, other people getting, uh, uh, sabotaging you? Like it was asking all these things like psychological questions that I hadn't even thought about. I was like, wait, other people don't hear voices in their head? Like, mm -hmm. what? No, I'm just kidding. I don't hear voices. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the personality test took like two hours and then, uh, I remember waiting really, really late that night. Like we were sitting in a room, like, and it's just like 30 girls not allowed to talk to each other. As one by one, the producers would take each girl into a separate room and ask them whatever, you know, but we didn't know what they were asking them. Like there were these like little interviews, right? And it just felt like a really long week. And then on Wednesday, I remember doing the photo shoot and that was the day we saw Tyra for the first time. Mm -hmm. Oh, my Were you excited? Gosh, it's like crazy when you see someone without the TV screen. You mm -hmm. know, like I just been so used to growing up watching Tyra on TV. Mm -hmm. And you like, it's just when you see this person right in front of you and their person too. But Tyra is not a person. She's totally an alien. You think so? Oh my God, she cannot possibly just be from this world alone. Like she's so, oh my God, she will wear heels like this tall. And then she's already super tall. Mm -hmm. So she's just like, just this A Amazon, giant. like, you know what I mean? Like she's from the same place as Superwoman. Has and then she has her eyes, like her that. eyes are super green and it matches mm -hmm. like the skin, her skin tone. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it has like, it all compliments. Like she's got gold, you know, bronzer in her eyes. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, <gasps> 
hi. And so then <laughs> they want to interview us and like, how do you feel about this? And I was like, <laughs> this is awesome. You know, like I'm speechless. I don't know what you want me to say. This is so cool. Like I couldn't get over it. Like the whole time I was like, you guys, we're working with Tyra Banks. And Molly's like, I need a, a seat cushion. What are those butt things? Like they're like little red. They're like for old people. <laughs> It's like a red cushion. Yeah, like for your boobs. It own yeah, she needed one of those. She was like, I need a butt cushion. Because we were doing so much sitting and the hurry up and wait thing. Hurry up and, and wait. God damn it. it. It was grueling. And so when you see people like really bitchy on reality TV shows, especially when it's like a competition or something like that, they treat, I feel like the producers and the people who film, uh, well, it's not like the, the camera people never talk to you. You only right. talk to the, the producers or like the people off camera. You don't mm -hmm. talk to the ca actual camera person, but um, they would ask us questions that would like lead us to the answer that they wanted. So they would say something like, uh, so why do you think Alexandria is a bitch? Well, I think Alexandria is a bitch because she grew up in LA. It's like they want you to answer the question Sound with bias. the question and the mm -hmm. answer. Mm -hmm. So it's already like, that's how they write reality TV is they kind of guide your conversation along. Um, and so, yeah, it was a really awesome experience. And uh, <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, there was one question I saw. In the Keep comments. going, Hannah. Sorry. No, you're okay, fine. There was, one, Go at there was it. one question I saw in the comments that I thought was so funny. Which, which one? Uh, so, okay. Well, Somebody asked, uh, <laughs> what about the stuff that, they, that you don't see on TV? And for me, one thing that I've never really gotten to talk about as, on such a, like, I really like respect you and what you're doing. I love the fact that you're, uh, you know, you're interested in all of this and then like getting the conversation started and like asking some really deep questions and, and, and inviting people to ask some really, uh, you know, some of these things are really hard to talk about. Mm -hmm. um and so okay it was me molly and Brittany, and this is a scene that was not on tv and I, and for five years i had to sign uh, like i signed a contract um we all did Brittany might have talked about it too but you sign a contract you're not allowed to like publicize things that happened if they didn't air on tv if they didn't air on tv we signed that it never actually happened and if we were to say something that happened that wasn't on tv um it's like not, it would be like infringement or something like on the brand of top model. So now that that contract's dead, <laughs> I can talk about it with you. Okay. Strike so, it up, Hannah, strike it up! What happened with y'all three? Hold on, okay. hold get, on. Get your, get your tea bags, turn on that kettle. First, we're gonna need to fire up, get this tea kettle steaming. Okay, we're gonna make that tea kettle whistle with some drama. Wh All right. The question is, can it whistle while you twerk? That's the question. <laughs> I <laughs> love that. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, whistle I'm while you twerk. <laughs> Hannah, can you twerk? I've been working on it. Let me see. Okay. Well, just guys, keep in mind I have not stretched properly. It's okay. Or, or gotten, um, but, okay, hold on a second. I might have to Whip get up on the stool. Whip while you twerk. Boop, 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 boop. I got to get up on the stool. Whip while you twerk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to, like, kill myself in the process. Woman <laughs> died twerking. Whip the while you twerk. Hey, whip the while you twerk. Oh, my God. Ow, oh, ow, my back. <laughs> I'm too old for that shit. <laughs> Hannah, where are you in the world? Um, that's a good question. Like I said, it's really hard to pin me down. Right now I'm in Vegas. <laughs> I, 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 I. Hannah, <laughs> call me every day, please. This is amazing. I would gladly. Gladly. I love call you. Call me every day, please. This this is amazing. Um, call me in the call <laughs> Hannah, okay, back back to the thing with you, Brittany, and and Molly, because <gasps> I know the people watching are like, say it, say it, what happened? So let me show you. Is up. that tea I'm kettle nice and mm -hmm. is it starting to whistle for you guys? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got My pencil sharpener is ready. Yes. 
Okay. So um, it was the final episode, last three girls. And I kind of, you know, this was down to the wire. We were in Morocco. Um, and, you know, there's a challenge at the beginning of an episode. And I think about this challenge from time to time, because had I won, I would not have had to do something that I morally regret until this day. Okay. Yeah. I regret what I had to do to those poor dead animals. But <clears throat> mm. mm -hmm. I don't know if Brittany or Molly have talked to you about this. Molly was not there because she was getting a spa day because she was the one who won the challenge. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I still have heat about this. Okay. No, it's okay. So, all right. So, um, the challenge, you know, it was to interview people in the streets of Morocco. And, um, I know you like Miss J. I, I, I have a feeling you love him very much. Mr. J. Mr. J and Miss J are amazing. Um, I respect what they do for a living. I understand. <laughs> However, Mr. J was out to get me from the beginning. I swear he did not like me. Maybe because of my pigtails. I don't know. Maybe because of I'm 5'11". I don't know. But like, I remember that was the reason I cried at the B shoot. Okay. But anyways, <clears throat> the tea is spilling. <laughs> I can't guarantee. I know where it's going to drop. <laughs> all right. Please, in my how are, mouth. How are you doing, Oliver? Girl, I'm just like, what's gonna, what's gonna be said? Even though I think I do know a story you're about to tell, but I feel like there's more to it. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just preparing my body, my mind, heart, and soul. Okay. So after the challenge, like we, we got back to our Moroccan suite, which was amazing, and it was really like a palace, and Miss. Mr. J came in and was like, we're going to watch your interviews and I'm going to decide who gets a, a, a luxurious spa day. Or he goes, the first thing he said was, hey girls, how did you like the challenge today? And I was like, oh, I really loved it because we got to immerse in the culture of Morocco. And he was like, oh, well, the losers of this challenge are really going to get to immerse themselves in the culture of Morocco. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I, I was so scared. Um, not to mention that first episode, ever since that, I was on pins and needles. Like, I Me? thought at any moment, because we were, we were lied to. They said, like, you're, you're going home. And the other girls, they were like, you get to go to the house. Like, ever since that, I thought at any second, anybody could go home. You know, so I was, like, always under a lot of anxiety and pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Mr. J watched the videos back with us. And Britney's was terrible. Like she was so clumsy and funny. <laughs> and it was just like, she ran down like a dark hallway with the microphone cord, like trailing after her and the camera following. Like, she was just like oh my gosh, I'm gonna go. You know, it was so fun to watch. And then Molly's was, uh, it was pretty good. But at the end, like before the camera cut, she thought the camera had stopped rolling and she was like, oh, fuck this. <laughs> right? So she like, Right. <laughs> and so I thought I was going to win. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to win this challenge. Like I thought that I, it was, I remember exactly what it was about. It was about Moroccan hair oil, argon oil. Mm -hmm. And I was, we had to interview people that didn't speak English. That was mm -hmm. part of the challenge is that we were interviewing people in Morocco about their products. Mm -hmm. And Molly got black eyeliner, like black I really can't remember what Brittany got because she was like running down a hallway the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, but mine was argon oil. And I know that argon oil is really good for your hair. My dad's a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Okay. So, yeah. And so we can talk about like the makeover part too. Um, of course. I know people had questions about that. But um, so uh, when I was talking to this lady, I was asking her questions about the argon oil and she didn't speak much English. So she would say like, you know, she would answer yes. Yeah. Like I would be like, so is this argon oil? Like, can you describe how it's good for your hair? And she'd be like, very good. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. For an interview, that's not very helpful. Like I'm not going to be able to sell the product. So after she'd say very good, I'd go, oh, and yeah, I heard it has all these properties. Can you talk about these properties? They're good. Very good. Oh, good. And then so I'd be like, okay. Um, so we have, and I would try to explain what's in the argon oil and things like that. And at the end of my interview, I'm like, thank you for watching. Morocco's awesome. See you next time. <laughs> and remember, we had to film. We had to produce these ourselves. That was the challenge. 
Mm-hmm. So Mr. J thought Molly's was the best. And Molly got to go have a spa day. And Brittany and I were taken outside. And on a table outside, as the sun's kind of coming down, we're in the back alley of this place. And the alley goes all the way down the street with all these men around. Moroccan men are, are much different than white women. I mean, uh, white men in America are not white men, but sorry, why, why am I saying white? But men in general, you know what I mean? Like Moroccan men, like in Morocco, you had to keep everything covered. Your shoulders, the women did. Oh, they would okay? get rid of me. It was, it was scary. I don't know if you want to go to Morocco without a bodyguard. Like, just in general, it was amazing, but, like, mm-hmm. it was so nice having the security from the show. Mm-hmm. And so we were in this uh, uh, alleyway with all these, like, men, and they were laughing because they we come to a table that's covered in animal guts and animal parts. And I remember seeing a severed cow's head, severed. So it was, like, right here. I don't see any hearts. Do you guys like this story? I know it's really gruesome. Give Hannah Cat hearts. I just want to make sure you're still listening. <gasps> okay, no, so. Oh, no, they're listening. It's 172 right, people is, watching us right now. This is, yeah, it's super cool. So this is where it gets really weird. So there's a severed cow's head. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen a cow, but like their heads are pretty big. And so there's a cow's head on the table with its tongue hanging out. There's uh, organs of a goat and like, then goat legs and just all different parts of the animals of these multiple animals bodies. And so it's on a table and they give us an apron, gloves, and a donkey (laughs) with a wagon attached to it. Now, when you lose a challenge on America's Next Top Model, the winner gets something and the losers have to do something. This was what we had to do. We had to pick up animal parts off a table put them in the back of a donkey cart and take the donkey a very stubborn donkey down a moroccan alley with men like laughing at us and a butcher take them to a butcher's uh window in the alley like it does not smell nice here okay it smells gross we're covered in blood from animals and me and Brittany had to lift the cow head together. It was so large. And we're both like, ooh, ooh. Like, we're, and now there's cameras, right? There's cameras filming this. And I'm thinking the whole time, when this airs on America's Next Top Model, what are people going to think of this show? Tyra, we bind you. Go ahead. I mean, I don't even know if Tyra knew that this happened. Like, she wasn't there. I honestly don't think Tyra would have said to that. I don't know. She wasn't there, okay? (laughs) Okay, so then, this is where it gets so gross. So, I mean, it's already been gross up until this point. And and as they're filming, I'm, like, thinking, like, okay, well, this is going to be on TV. I'm just going to play it through. Although in the back of my mind, I was like, why am I doing this? Like, I don't need to be here anymore. This isn't like, I don't believe in this. Like, I don't think this is right, you know? And both me and Brittany, like after that, we're completely vegetarian. Like we did not want to eat animal because of it, you know? And so, cause it's like meat that's been sitting around. Like it was smelly. And then we had to pick up the animal parts, crawl through a cell, like the, the, the door, this like little gate of the meat locker and put the, the meat in like a little like fridge thing, the Moroccan. Um, and yeah, it was really bad. It was really, really gross. Um, and then, so fast forward, I come home. My parents were like, how did you do? And I was like, I got third place. And they were like, that's awesome. Good job. And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah. But like this experience literally happened like four days before the end of the show. Mm. How do you guys people think that? How do you think about that? What okay, do I so think somebody, about it? Yeah, I want to tell yeah. them, fuck no. I'm not touching that. 
right? So somebody says, I would have refused to do it. Now, remember earlier, I said, like, you know, if it had been Molly, if it had been Alexandria, they would have been like, fuck you, I'm not doing this. And I had not learned yet to stand up for myself. Like I was so young in the world. And, um, you know, when you're, when you're 20 years old, you think that you're like, I'm not when you're 20, you're like, well, I'm not 16. I'm older now, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but like, there's just you through these experiences where you get outside of your comfort zone. And for me, that was so uncomfortable. And like, the whole experience was amazing and fun. But I was constantly crying. And people want to know, like, were you a crybaby? And it was like, yeah, I, I barely got to talk to my parents. I, I thought I was going to go home every episode, even though some people said I did really well. I had never modeled before. Like I'd never done the runway mm -hmm. show. I'd never done a runway show before. Mm -hmm. I looked like, I looked terrible on the runway. And, you know, being next to Brittany, I like was like, oh my God, can you please teach me? I remember when I first met Brittany, her and I, and she'll, she, I, she might remember this too. We linked arms. And I was like, if I don't win, I want you to win. And she was like, if I don't win, I want you to win. Aww, <laughs> it was so cute. So we were cute. So, yeah, so it was fun. Um, it was really cool. And, uh, you know, that episode where I carried the meat down the road. <laughs> that's such a funny phrase now. Like, I carried meat down the road. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so after I did that, yeah, I, I ended up going home. I, that was the episode I went home and uh, went went home, guys, is actually you don't go home. Of course. Yes. You get you hang out in a hotel room. Mm -hmm. And um, so it actually been it was like the best time to get cut from the show. Mm -hmm. Because oh, waving to the people. Hi, guys. I love that. Yeah, so uh, I got to go shopping in Morocco, and that was a way better experience than carrying animal uh, guts. <laughs> uh, yeah. I have a I have a Moroccan story told by me from someone who worked the show, and ooh, I'm not gonna say no name. Actually, I think it was New Zealand. It's not. It's not cycle 16. It's cycle 14. So I'm not a lot of it. them worked a lot and it was really cool meeting the makeup artists in LA for sure because a lot of the LA makeup artists had worked mm -hmm. on shows pa in the past mm -hmm. and then the same with the um the camera crew a lot of them work on all different types of reality shows mm -hmm. and they're so much different than like you know the fashion people that you see on camera like Nigel and Mr. Mm -hmm. and Mrs. J, Andre Leon Talle um, you know, Franca Sassoni was, that was really cool meeting her, mm -hmm. but <laughs> so that was the, the episode of the camel photo shoot in Morocco, which, which I, I felt like I, love. I felt like it was one of my favorite shoots. Like it was so much fun. It was really, really hot. Ooh, and... Hannah. Ooh, Hannah. Ooh, ooh, Hannah. Okay. Hold on. Let me stop you right fast. Let me stop you right fast. Okay. We're going to get into the, um, the thingy, Th that question. Let me do something right fast that I know the kids are like, when is he going to do it? And I don't want them cursing us out anymore. We're going to do a and and Roll Call. Right, here okay. they go already. We're going to do a and and Roll Call where I named every person who was cast on your cycle. And you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to your brain. Guys, we just got caught up in the stories and all those things. So we're kind of a little unorthodox right now. But let me do this. And then we're going to get into that into that question because that was a very powerful question for the fans. But are okay. you ready? Are you ready? I think so. Wait, so how does it go? I just give you my opinion about them? You're the first thing that comes to your brain. Oh, God. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Angelia. Stitch from uh, Lilo and Stitch. She does a really great person at, person at, uh, impersonation, impersonation of Lilo. Of Lilo or Stitch? Both. Of Stitch. Both. Of Stitch, the alien. She Wait, does what? like his nose and everything. It's really funny. She does like the whole thing. Uh huh. How was that first photo shoot for you? Uh, that was oh my gosh, that was with the Victoria's Secret uh, photographer Russell James. I felt like such a, a, a supermodel. Mm -hmm. I was like, I've done it. I've shot with a photographer from Victoria's Secret. I'm a supermodel now. Like mm -hmm. I was like, yes. <laughs> like right off the bat that was so cool um to and uh, at that uh that was the same shoot or the same uh episode that oh my god she was a model that I really looked up to she's from Dallas Emma I can't remember help us guys 
What was that model's name? She was amazing. She gave us some of her jewelry from her collection. That was definitely one of the perks of being on, on America's Next Top Model is we got free stuff. And I have some of it still, but it's not really my style anymore. So I was thinking about putting it on like Depop or Poshmark or something. Mm -hmm. But I feel like people from the show would appreciate it more. And I just don't mm -hmm. want to send it out to anybody. So I don't know if you guys like that idea. Yes. Aaron Watson, Aaron Watson, Aaron Watson. Thank you. I am Vicky <laughs> mm -hmm. Aaron Watson. That's the model from that, that show or that episode. And she was amazing. She gave us the bracelet. I still have it. It's very cool. But like I said, I don't know if that's still my style. So might go on my Depop profile. I mean, fit. <laughs> it's like a bangle. Oh, maybe, may, uh, maybe a bangle that can go on my ankle. I, <laughs> I feel like that would be harder to get it through your foot. No, but, no, you know, I do have, I do also have like a really pretty blue tunic. I feel like would look really cool on you. Like at Coachella. Oh, yes. I could pull it out right now. You want to see it? Yeah. Okay. Just hold, please. You, mm -hmm. Do you want to like ask? I don't know. I'll be right I'll back. I'll sing a song while you go on. We were selling along on Lulai Bay. We can hear the whistle singing. They seem to say, you have stolen my heart. Hi. <laughs> That's beautiful. You're really Thank good. You. Thank okay, you. so what was that from? What? The song hey, was Arnold! From? Oh my God, you're amazing. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, one of the pieces I got in Morocco from uh, one of the designers. The tag is kind of hanging off, but uh, the designer, I can't pronounce her name. And it was funny because we did a fashion show for her. And I remember being so terrified that I wasn't going to remember the designer's name. <laughs> that I was like, kept trying to look for the name. But yeah, so this is Tunic. Oh, that is I don't beautiful. Know. It's it, it's hard to let it go. I don't know if it's my style. Okay, and then I have, so you can wear that. Maybe you could try that on for Coachella. Mm -hmm. And then I'll wear this. <gasps> or, or if you want, you can wear this one. <laughs> That's the one, Hannah. That's the one. <laughs> okay, That's so yeah. One. I mean. <clears throat> the next person on the list is Andre. Supermodel. She quit. But also, also really, really, I could, she had a lot of sadness and I can, I can totally understand. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't understand, but I can, I totally um, feel for her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you speak to her after the show or no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about Nicole? Doctor. She's a doctor She's now? Yeah, she's like, I think she's a nurse, but she, uh, scrubs. Oh, nice. <laughs> she, she's in the hospital. She's doing something. She also has a baby. Oh, nice. Yeah. How was that B photo shoot for? You got first call out, but you were freaking out. Uh, that, I hated the makeup for that. <laughs> I was, like, I don't think any of the girls liked the makeup. And so we were all looking at each other like, oh, ooh. You know, we were all like, ooh. I, I just didn't understand that look. Like the black eye, eyes and just the whole execution was strange to me. And then going into uh, a cage with bees. Uh, okay, I remember what was going through my head. And I'm like so weird. This is why Tyra Banks calls me Hippie Hannah. So in my <laughs> head, I'm like, okay, how am I going to embody the person in this photo shoot? Because listen, I did not know that much about modeling going into it. I have been acting my whole life. Mm -hmm. And so I saw each photo shoot or challenge as like a way to be a different character. And so mm -hmm. I had this crown on with all the bees uh, around my head. And I was in this like cage with the bees thing and seeing them, some of them dying on the ground, which really made me mad. And I was like, I'm the queen bee and this is my hive. And then I was like giving this like really intense look into the camera, but I didn't really know yet how to smolder or what Tyra Banks likes to call smizing. Mm -hmm. You know, the smize. There you I go. I didn't know. Okay, so smizing is a really fancy word, you guys, for squint. Mm -hmm. 
Stop it. The best way I heard her explain it, and it made so much sense for me. She was like, smizing is really just looking for something in the distance, and you just keep you just keep trying to look for it, but you can't really find it. But you just keep looking for it. I was like, oh, that's exactly what it is. You just keep looking. Yeah, because when you're looking for something, you got to squint. <laughs> but I love it. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, but when you say smize, and it's like smile without smiling, without using your lips, I was like, <laughs> you know like I couldn't get it at first so uh yeah I really wish I would have heard that explanation look for something you said that Jay Manuel made you cry at this photo shoot oh yeah so okay so he was standing outside of the cage and he was to the, I remember he's on the side of me and uh I'm doing all this stuff just like looking at the camera like dead inside like really trying hard to model but like overthinking it you know, mm -hmm. like I was so in my head. And so I'm like this on camera, <laughs> like not looking good. Right. And he's on the outside, like Hannah, all you have to do is isolate different parts of your body. Give us different poses, different expressions like this, this, this. And he just like gave me so much information within like a second. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? <laughs> what <did you> <laughs> I was like, this is so hard. I was like, I'm trying to model, but all I, like, I'm so, this is, I started to get so, uh, I started over, like, I got an anxiety attack. Mm -hmm. And there's a scene where I'm like, oh, I think I'm having an anxiety attack. But yes, it's happened to me a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was the first time it ever happened, but I knew exactly what it was. The second time it's happened to me, it was during the pandemic. <laughs> really? Yeah, and I'm, I definitely think mental health is just as important as your physical health um, or your financial health, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, uh, all of those things, you know, without your health, you don't have wealth, but health is not just your physical self, it's also your mental self, and mm -hmm. me yeah, so, um, like, you know, I don't, I don't think anybody has a perfect brain, like, we're not robots, and over time, we all experience trauma. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody learns different ways to cope with that, you know, but we all have one thing in common, one trauma in common. Which is? Well, um, we all have the very first scar that you get when you're born is your belly button. This is true. This is true, Hannah Kerr. So, you they cut your umbilical cord and all of a sudden you've got something that you don't need for the rest of your life that scar your belly button mm -hmm. right and okay so like that's just the beginning like life is hard right and no mm -hmm. matter who you are you're going to have those trauma like you're going to have traumas of some mm -hmm. sort whether it's you know things that you like trouble you make for yourself or things that just happen mm -hmm. to you you know <laughs> Hannah, but uh, I, I don't know where I was going with that. Hannah, Do you it doesn't, it fucking doesn't even matter where you're going because we're all just following you. I'm just, I'm just gonna say the next person's name because I'm just really enjoying you. The next person is Dominique. Oh, Dominique Freckles. Mm -hmm. Those freckles, and she has a really fun personality. Like she, I, she's somebody who I felt didn't take life or anything too seriously. Uh, which was really fun hanging out with her because she was just like, mm, no, mm -mm, no. Yeah, like she just like didn't like accept things for like, I don't know. She's also a Houston girl. So we uh, we did a couple of the like CW interviews together. Oh, dope. How yeah. was that um, Alice in Wonderland joint photo shoot for you? Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> you said joint, and I really wish I would have had one at that photo shoot because they wanted us to be crazy. And um, I was, like, crazy about bags. No, and... no, 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 no. Oh. The, it was oh, when you guys were, when you guys had, you were partnered up. Who were you partnered up with, Hannah? I don't remember. Brittany. Brittany. Wait, it wasn't, a, it wasn't guys. There weren't guys there, though. No, this is when you were partnered up with some another girl in a competition. Guys, who was Hannah partnered with? I think it was Brittany. Brittany. Yeah, it was Brittany. Her Brittany and I were Brittany. like, yeah, we're gonna mm -hmm. do this. How was that? It was awesome. I think we got we did we get first photo? I feel like we didn't, but we totally deserved it and we were really pissed about it. 
<laughs> <laughs> the next person on the list is Sarah. Well, they were named Sarah Jan, but they go by Rune now, which I really wish Rune would pronounce it Rune. Ah, oh, gosh, she totally stole that from Euphoria. I want, I want to name my daughter Rue. She'll probably turn into uh, Bruce or something. <laughs> but yeah, Sarah. Sarah's a badass. She has a tattoo on her back that says "I am." Well, Rue. they just so just so we don't ruin and they them and they are their pronouns. Okay? Them them is they them mm -hmm. is they them is they. Mm -hmm. uh, Rue uh, had a rat's tail at the beginning of the season, and then they got a makeover. And then they, uh, you know, definitely, definitely uh, one of a, a one of a kind individual, mm -hmm. for sure. I loved talking to Rue about um, um, best boys. <laughs> she knew a lot about that. <laughs> And Molly brought hers. I was like, girl, that's so gross. She's going to be, Molly brought like a little pen. And I was like, she's like, want to see my vibrator? And was like, and I was like, what the heck, Molly? You're, Molly you're, I was lit. so glad I wasn't her roommate. Did Molly tell, Molly did not tell us that she brought a toy. Ask her of about course it. Molly She'll probably deny it. Of course Molly no, Molly and I are cool. Course. She's, we talk all the time. Well, we met mm -hmm. with DM. How was that? Um, how was that commercial with the coffee? That's one of my favorite things on Top Models. Just saying, <sighs> I love that commercial because Met Madman was like really big, and I got to do that with Monique, and Monique was amazing. Like she was just like, "Can I get you some coffee?" And I was like, "Ooh, I like what you're doing. How about some more coffee?" You know. So we were both <laughs> like on the same mm -hmm. level of like you know these like we're totally having fun playing the part of these like mm -hmm. uh 50s women that were in such a different world than people are now and um yeah we got first that week so that was cool and i really 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 wish that i could find like a high res version of that commercial because i'd love to add that to my actors reel you know like mm -hmm. hannah can do, you know, the 50s look. I have a very like old school look. I think that was one of the things that they told me on Top Models that I had kind of like a classic beauty, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't really help when like, you know, modeling, they're looking for usually like things that are like trend setting and like, mm -hmm. you know, breaking the mold. And I was sort of an old mold. I felt like on the show, mm -hmm. they were like, you're, you're, you're just, we're not sure if you're 2010 or 2011. Because uh -huh. it's crazy. It was 10 years ago. One of the things that Tyra Banks said is like, we think you're, you have star potential. We just don't know if you have 2011 star potential. Oh, Tyra. I'm like, thank Jesus. God it's not 2011 anymore. Shit. I hope my star potential <laughs> is going to be popping soon. It I gotta watch my language. Sorry. The, the oh no, don't watch it at all. Don't watch it. Okay. Now the fans in the comments are like, Kasha actually got first call out um for the fiercely roast week, and that's why I looked at that was like, no, I think Kasha oh. got first call out that week because Kasha's was like so good. Oh my god! This whole time I thought <laughs> <laughs> this whole time I lied to myself because as an actor, I think Kasha and I were the most serious about being actors. And Kasha is definitely super serious about it. Like she is work always constantly working on something new in her acting, which I totally respect. Yeah, the last time we talked to her, she was doing the um, a crowdfunding for a film that she was producing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's called Normal or something. Something. Um, I'm not, I don't want to. I don't want to fabricate. I don't want to lie. She had some, right, she had some really fun stories about uh, taking acting classes from James Franco in New York City. And at the time, she was like, well, I'm kind of seeing this guy in New York, but can't really talk about it. I was like, is it James Franco? She's like, mm -hmm. and I was like, I think it's James Franco, you guys. <laughs> you could tell me anything. I'm super gullible. So like, yeah. 
I, I'm sure she was like pulling my chain about classes with James Franco, but. I'm pretty sure, I feel like Kasha has been around the world five times. Like she's met, she's met <laughs> everybody, she's done everything. She just, she's definitely had the most time to do it. Oh my God, oh my God. The next person on the list is Dahlia, oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry, was that <laughs> low blow? Hannah, I'm gonna remind, get there me too, me, man. remind me to, if we ever get in a reading match, I need I need to be prepared. Oh my goodness, God! Damn. <laughs> oh my that God. was so quick. I'm just cow. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was that little cow in, on, on the slab of Morocco, just chopped. Oh my God, that was so quick. <laughs> you're good. I'm 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 prob I told you, you're devil's advocate. So um, <laughs> okay, so who was the sorry? Dahlia was, was name? Da Dahlia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dahlia, like the flower. She, anytime somebody would be like, so, um, where, uh, they would be saying our names, and they'd be like, so what's your name? It's Dahlia, like the flower. Like, every time somebody would be like, so what's your name, right? Anytime she'd introduce herself, Dahlia, like the flower. And people would be like, like the flower, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like, after a while. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how I remember Dahlia. Anything on um that photo shoot you guys did with the this is the um was it a, was it a leopard a tiger a cheetah it was a cheetah it was an ocelot it was a what <laughs> I know right so it's spelled I think O S C O S C O <laughs> just start with the OSC in Google and like the one of the first things that will probably come up is the ocelot hopefully oh it's an ocelot you see it I see yeah. the ocelot so I just say baby jaguar because like it kind of looks like a jaguar, but um, technically we were playing with baby ocelots or one baby ocelot, and I got to shoot first with it, um, which was good for a number of reasons. All right, so Oliver, for that photo shoot, by far my favorite hair and makeup transformation of the show as well, because first they like. Uh, they did this technique where they take bobby pins and they wrap all of your hair in little bobby pins, the whole thing, and then they iron it. And so it creates mm -hmm. this crimp. Mm -hmm. um, so they take the bobby pins out and then they tease our hair. So our hair goes, yes, baby ocelot, yes. Oh, okay, so it's, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of, so. So we, I got this big fro going and then what they do did with our eyebrows is they took like, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but they put tape right here on attached to a string and they pull the string back. So your eyes are like, it's like an, uh, an eye lift, right? And then they take a str the strings and they tie it behind your hair and then they cover it with the hair. So your eyes are like this the whole day. Mm hmm right which right now right now it looks a little different because i have all these wrinkles but <laughs> back in 2000 <laughs> back in 2010 it was really like anyways uh so at, for a couple of hours that look is fine but over over the course of the day it gets really really painful with your hair and your your skin pulled back like that attached anchored at the back of your head so i was really lucky that i got to go first because the, also the baby jaguar ocelot um, it was really sweet with me and really cuddly with me, but through the course of the day, it started getting super feisty because it was getting handled all day long by different models and different people. So by the end of the day, I think that's when we see Alexandria's shot. And if you pull up Alexandria's shot, it's like, <sighs> it's hissing at her and she's hissing back. And it's a great shot, but she was getting bit and scratched. And I think that really showed that uh, Alexandria was much more of a trooper than people gave her credit for because mm -hmm. she she was totally working that ocelot. I just love saying that word ocelot. Ocelot. <laughs> yes. Oliver, can you use ocelot in a sentence? Yes. Hey, daddy, do you want to come pet my ocelot? <laughs> oh, I love that. The next person that. on the list is Monique. Momo. Momo. She's such a 
star child. I love Momo. She's actually had such a transformation because on the show, um, she was only like 18, I feel like. or Yeah, she must have been 18 or so. She was one of the younger girls. Um, and she kind of had a bad attitude. And I remember watching the show after, like when it had aired. And you, that's when, for the first time, you see every all the other girls' reactions uh, about you that they that you they don't say to your face during the show it's like all the stuff that they record in the interviews right so after the b photo shoot where i'm crying there's like a cutaway to monique in the interview being like ugh, like she's so annoying she's always crying or whatever monique was over I, monique was over y'all <laughs> right so but i love monique because she texted me like that night, we're all watching the show in different parts of the US, right? We had been gone back to our homes. She texted me and she's like, dude, I'm so sorry. Like she felt bad that like she had talked about me and I was like, it's okay, it's just a show. Like I get it. Like mm -hmm. I, it's part of the story, it's part of the drama, it's entertaining. Um, and I like, we've hung out a couple of times and you know, seeing her where she is now being like really health conscious. She's super mm -hmm. health conscious. She's really about like a holistic, uh, plant-based lifestyle like I just love the direction she's going and how she's growing because when she was on the show she was such a brat <laughs> she I remember at one point she goes I don't need a driver's license because I just need someone to drive me like I'm just gonna have a driver <laughs> she's like I just have a drive I'm just gonna have a driver I don't need a driver's license <laughs> I was like was how are you gonna get <laughs> yeah and now she she could have probably come up with uber you know, she probably was part of that, um, you know, the secret science behind Uber. So for all of you guys who are in the classroom today and are like, why is everyone in the comments keep talking about what the password is? This is why y'all asses should come to every classroom because you never know what happens. And my chat with Gianna from Cycle 20, Gianna was like, there was a deleted scene that she really wanted to see. And me in Oliver Twix fashion came up with this whole story that when Tyra Banks invites me to her house and I go use the bathroom where she said she hung, she, she's going to hang up um, Kiara Balin's photo from Cycle 19, I'm pretty sure that the safe with all the lost top model footage that we want to see is behind Kiara's photo in Tyra Banks' bathroom. And so I was like, I wonder what the password is. And it started this entire mess. And so I, I think from now, from now until I keep doing chat, they're going to be in the comments talking about the password is and they just keep coming up with foolishness. <laughs> Sitting on a secret. It's probably something like Ty Ty Baby. What's her birth year? What's Tyra's birth year? Because, um, like, you know, I don't know about you guys, but passwords usually involve, I don't, oh, I should probably not give away my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next, the next person on the list is Michaela. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... The first thing that comes, the first thing that comes to my mind is when Tyra Banks said to Michaela during a photo shoot or like a, during one of the judging panels, Michaela, can you just soften the bones in your face? And we were all like, Miss Tyra Banks, how do you soften the bones in your face? <laughs> it didn't make any sense. Like we were laughing about that. Uh, for in the house, like Michaela was just like, how am I supposed to soften the bones in my face? Ma uh, Michaela had like a really low voice. And um, the thing is, is during the makeover, which you don't really see as much because uh, Molly was having such a shit show about her make her uh, like the extensions they had uh, sewn into her hair that um, Michaela had also gotten extensions and actually had to mm -hmm. go to the hospital. She had to go to the hospital. Why? <laughs> Because they were too tight. She was getting like really bad headaches. And they like took her, she was like passing out and stuff. And so they didn't show her actually even getting, does anybody remember Michaela's makeover? She got, she got extensions too. And then all of a sudden she didn't have them anymore. And another part of that contract that I signed was that if we died or got harmed, or if anything happened to us on the show, our parents, our family would not get anything like money right or like uh getting paid hospital bills or getting paid for uh psych psych uh therapists afterwards because i don't know whatever like they were yeah basically like money or i don't know just 
if you died, there was like nothing that your family could do about it. Or if you got hurt, there was nothing that the show was going to help you with for. Ooh. So very interesting. Jack okay, was... so then they were like, walk oh. on fire, right? <laughs> Which we're going like, to get yeah, to. Yeah, sure, we'll walk on fire. Which we're yeah, going to get Jacqueline. to. Mm -hmm. Baby voice, Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. I'm a woman now. I can't really do it. Hold on a second. <clears throat> Wait, hold on. I have to do my vocal exercises. Woo! I'm a woman now. Yeah, that's how she, she was. Uh, I'm, she, she turned 18 on the show, or maybe it was, I don't think she turned 21. Maybe she turned 21. But she's like, I'm a woman now. She kept saying that. Mm -hmm. I was like, you're freaking 21 and you still sound like a baby. <laughs> like, you're not a woman now. But yeah, she uh, she's really cute. She was really sweet. And she's actually a really good singer. But really? not the sharpest tool on the show. <laughs> yes, she was a good little singer. Yeah, I remember her, like, hearing her. Like, we would be in the car and, like, like listening to music. You know, the little, the bus or whatever. Like, listening, she'd be like, ah, ah, you know? <laughs> Pretty good. You, sound, you sounded just like her, though. You sounded, like, almost uh, just like her. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. You're so kind. It wasn't that she had a baby accident. It was that she also had a... Um, a, like a Western accent on top of that. Mm -hmm. like she didn't just have a baby voice. It was also, she was from, from a small town in Texas. Mm -hmm. and I, me and, me and Rue are looking at each other like, God, she gives Texas a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we, we're not all like her. You know, over mm -hmm. here, I'm like crazy. Rue's Rue, you know, and then we got Dominique. There was a lot of girls from Texas. The next person on the list is your favorite girl, Kasha. Kasha. Oh, she was the mama bear. She had the best. She, well, no, she seriously was so, like, at that point, you know, she was so mature. And, like, she had such a great skincare routine. Mm -hmm. That's really, anytime I do, anytime I think about spending, um, like, more money than I want to on, like, a, a cream, a skincare cream, I'm like, Kasha would do it. You know, she, she like really invested in that. She gave us her skin routine um, regimen in her chat. She gave us every item that you needed to get. Mm -hmm. And it's like 20 things, right? <laughs> Was it? Maybe? Maybe 21, 19 I things? Don't know. Yeah, but like all the things she said was like things that you could like go get. Like it was really, it was specific, but it wasn't like unattainable. <laughs> Right, like mm -hmm. uh, s snail uh, goo. You know, there's like those creams that are made out of like snail goo. I'm like, I actually I'm have okay. one in my bathroom, and I have yet to open it. <laughs> so it sounds like it would smell so bad. You never done one? Mm -mm. Mm. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about snail. I like ass facials, on my face. but <laughs> snail ass is like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I would probably want. I'd take like butterfly wings. Ooh. And just be like, give me your effervescent, iridescent awesomeness. <laughs> <all over here." laughs> did you think did did you think Kasha was gonna win? Kasha? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I did not think that she was gonna win. Um, I feel like they wanted her to be more plus size. Mm. Because you, you go back and you look at it and she's really not um, that curvy. And mm -hmm. you meet her now and she's not, like, I don't think that she really was, like, uh, I think they were surprised when she came to, or through the course of the show, she actually lost weight. Mm -hmm. um, because of, like, this, I, and I remember when Tyra Banks uh, sent her home, she said something like, we just don't see you as plus size. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember her going, hey, like Tyra Banks was like, hey, you know, it looks like you've lost some weight. Like after she had gotten eliminated, Kasha's walking out of the room and she and, and Tyra Banks said this, hey, like, it looks like you're not, it looks like you're losing weight. And she goes, stress, you know, so I don't know. I just, wow. I think that I thought that uh, Kasha like had already kind of uh as a like as a model i feel like she'd already like kind of come she had already done so much as a model she mm -hmm. she was more focused i think in her heart 
she's more focused on doing acting, mm -hmm. um, being being a character and a personality, um, and do, and getting into that world. That's why, um, yeah, I think the show was really good for her. But um, yeah, I didn't think she was gonna win. The next person on the list is Alexandria. Oh, Lex, she's God. I diamonds. I think of diamonds when I think of her. She had this really cool quote, uh, tough as diamonds or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And she just, she just really like, I just loved her. Um, I loved her stories. Like she, you know, at first she's like, you know, really harsh and she would tell like, I remember one time in the van, Jacqueline was whistling <laughs> and Alexandria was like, don't do that. And we all like looked at each other like, <laughs> like because of the way alexandria was like hey stop <laughs> it was just like we were all like oh don't mess mess with lex you know um so there were definitely times where she was rough but she was like you know when you really talked to her she was actually a really cool person cool and now i think she's gonna be a cop now i think she's gonna be a cop she's gonna be a police officer yeah i think she's and training to be in the force. Uh, rough as diamonds, right? <laughs> Are you going to interview her? I mean, how do you feel about her? I feel like you don't like her. Um, well, it's funny you say that. No, I don't. The only thing I dislike in this world are cards. Ooh, um, I probably, good. I probably would never give another human the satisfaction of saying I dislike them. I feel like it's giving them too much power because that means I think about you and I don't. Um, <laughs> I actually I was that. supposed to interview her. Um, I was supposed to interview her. Ugh, I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole. Did, but... she, did she ghost you? Oh, she not. You know what? I probably would have preferred her to ghost me. Hey, David St. John. I probably would have preferred for her to ghost me, but. Um, her and Lisa went on like this whole social media thing and made it like a big thing and I had to do a video talking about it and it was just too much and I'm so sorry the, the only thing I would have really preferred for her because we're all adults you know we're all adults if if there was any change of heart if she had any change of heart for whatever reason I would have respected it she could have easily DM'd and be like hey Oliver I'm not doing it but I really felt like the need I felt like the actions of her and Lisa to take it to the public and and write and wrote wrote what they wrote and make it such a big thing let me know that there were like other motivations because like if it honestly was like hey we don't really want to do it and honestly she did she backed out of it I don't think I said this in my original video I had spoken to Alexandria like midnight the night before I was we were supposed to do the thingy and then once Lisa saw that I was going live with her I don't think Alexandria told Lisa. Once Lisa saw that I was going live with her and Lisa was already feeling the way about me, she told Alexandria not to do it. And then they posted all this dumb shit. And then <laughs> it put it put it put the entire world top model kingdom in like an uproar. I just would have preferred her to um handle it like an adult. So when Did we you get more followers though? Like hopefully at least they like more people came at you with like some love. Like, dude, Oliver, oh, I love the I think for the no? most part, I mean, and I really hated to make it like whose sides were on, but nobody bothers nobody bothers me. No, the top model, the top model fandom has really treated me very nicely. I will say that I love they them should. so much. They, they treat me so nice. And when it happened, I honestly probably could probably didn't even have to say anything because they were kind of doing all the windmilling in the streets for me. But just because I curate, you know, this platform and people look forward to it, I just wanted to explain to people what happened, the, the true yeah. facts, you know, about what happened. Um, just because a lot of people are invested in what I do and they follow it, they watch everything, they support it. And I just, I don't like playing with people's, like people's emotions and stuff like that, like that, that bothers me because I appreciate people supporting it. So I felt bad. I felt bad for the viewers, if anything. Aww. Well, see, that's so sweet that you care. And, like, I think that, you know, it is a family. It kind of feels like um, in the top model, the girls that have been on the show, it feels like a sorority. Like, we definitely, um, like, when you meet a girl from another a cycle, it feels like, you know, you've been through that experience together. And then it's, like, at the same time, when we meet uh, people that watch the show, 
the audience and they really enjoy it, that gives me so much life because uh, I just, my goal in, in life has always been to inspire people. And like my goal with modeling was to create images that people wanted to replicate or would inspire them to do their own fashion and their own stuff. And so the fact that you're keeping it alive in this way and like really, you know, um, bringing some fun new stuff to the table now that it's like, it, it, it has become this community and this sort of uh, really fun, interesting world of like the secrets that the sorority girls know the top model mm -hmm. girls and then the the outside the what you get from the editing on the show which is so contrived right I haven't cried once <laughs> but it's you know it's uh, there is always a chance of rain in my world like I'm mm -hmm. like I am so <laughs> I cry I cry so easily and I will tell you why well I don't know if this is the only reason but okay my dad my family, my dad's side of the family is super emotional. Mm. Um, that's my dad is Charlie Jones. And so my last name comes from him, right? Jones. Mm -hmm. um, his dad, his dad was the snake charmer that could do the kiss of death on cobras back in like the early 60s. And so he was on a re he was on one of the first television competitions called to tell the truth where they were trying to figure out who the real Ken Jones was. And he did the mm -hmm. kiss of death on the Cobra with a, like a live snake. So he was a snake charmer. And uh, being as that may, he was also a very emotional, very fluid person. If you catch my drift, right? Uh, he was very cool. He was very interesting. I never got to meet Ken Jones, uh, but because he died of AIDS. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was really sad. Um, so there's a lot of sadness from that. You know, I cried about that once in my like math class in middle school when a boy was like, uh, I don't understand. He was asking the math teacher, I don't, I don't get gay people. Um, and he was like, totally like, you know, he, he was one of those kids that was confused because his parents were Christian telling him that like, it wasn't like God didn't like it or whatever. And I was so upset because like, you know, my granddad, I don't know what, I never met him, but, you know, um, he was uh, such a great, he was like the patriarch of our family and mm -hmm. like his, his uh, person, his personality is so strong that mm -hmm. even though I never met him, his story is, is one of the most like powerful things that, you know, I don't mm -hmm. know. It's just, it's hard it to explain. You, you yeah. know, it's, it's two things I want to say before we move on to the next person. One thing is, I don't want anyone to think I hate Alexandria. And honestly, if Alexandria was like, hey, Oliver, I would love to do a chat. The only thing I would require is that she gives me a public apology since she made a public mess of everything. But I would love to still talk to her. And then the second thing is, I was doing, I was talking to someone the other day, and we were talking about God and homosexuality and Christianity. And I, to and, and I told them, I said, you know, one of God's favorite people was David, King David in the Old Testament. And King David, no matter how you try to flip it, was a homosexual. He was wow. a homosexual and he was God's oh. favorite person. God said, if David do something <laughs> wrong, don't nobody bother him. If you bother David, I'm gonna come get you. I can handle David. David was a homosexual. Where is that in the Bible? Like what what chapter is that? I want to read this. Um, I want to read it. I I can't remember exactly what chapter, probably the book of Psalm more than likely, okay. but in the, in the Bible, um, I believe David speaking of John says that John loved him way more than a woman could have ever like loved him. And then there were like, there were like other little verses that if you read it, you're like, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. This I love that. Fun. Look at us. We're like, it's <laughs> like, we're time. having, we're having to like Sunday school on a Wednesday. <laughs> it's what what isn't there like a Wednesday service? Like I love that. And I'm like, uh -huh. what chap like the Bible has chapters. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Dude. Oh, oh my God. Have you heard of this one? A course in miracles. miracles. Oh, that's cute. This will teach you uh how to work miracles, baby. Yes. The next person on our list is <laughs> Molly. Molly, oh. I, I feel like 
shit. She's like the prettiest girl I know. I mean, like she, when, uh, <laughs> when that final episode, when Brittany and Molly got all their hair chopped off, a, a couple things went through my mind. I was like, I am so glad I got sent home first before that happened because uh, my, me and my dad would have been really sad if my hair had gone, gotten bye-bye. Uh, and then the second thought I had in my head was, wow, Molly looks like Justin Bieber and it's kind of <laughs> hot. <laughs> I was like, dang, Molly, you look really hot. Yeah, she did look like Justin Bieber. She did. That's cute. And then I, I remember we were getting back. So that episode or like that filming, it happened within 24 hours. We were back on the plane, back home. And then we were going a separate ways. So I, I landed in Houston. They had the connecting flight in Houston. And I saw, I said bye to them there. It was so weird and eerie because for like two months, we had all been a family and the only people we'd been talking to. And then all of a sudden it was done. And the next thing I know, I'm going down a staircase or like a es escalator. And my parents, who uh, are divorced, and up until that point, ne were never seen in a room together. And after that show, they were able to hang out with one another. Like, and they had they had actually spent Thanksgiving together because I was away. And they had no idea where I was in the world. I wasn't allowed to tell them anything. We would write cards home and they would black out stuff in the letters that we'd write to them to make sure that we weren't sharing any information that wasn't allowed. So they would like read, it was weird. Like we were held in captivity. Okay. And then when I got home, my family had like, my, my mom and dad had, you know, uh, seen past their differences. And my mom is a really amazing person. Like that's who mm -hmm. I, that's why I get my spirituality and my, like, my, uh, a lot of kind of my uh, <laughs> quirkiness from, I feel like. My, my dad's very quirky, but my mom is super whimsical. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was cool. Oh, um, and the but, last person. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Sorry. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, I, what were you going to say? The last person is Brittany Klein. Brittany. Oh my gosh. Boots. That's the first thing that comes to my head is boots. She always had the cutest boots on and mm -hmm. I just loved her style on the show. Um, I love the fact that she's like really down to earth and um, her pixie cut, like she rocked. She literally rocked every haircut they gave her. Her runway walk was amazing. And uh, she just, I like she could eat so many cookies and I was like, where does it all go? <laughs> Like, I feel you, Oliver. Carbs, you know, carbs are, like, carbs can be scary. But look, look I'm here to tell you that there is a thing called buckwheat. <laughs> and you can use buckwheat to replace a lot of your carbs. Like, if you like pancakes, make buckwheat pancakes or buckwheat waffles. If you like noodles, get soba noodles. That's buckwheat. It, they're amazing. You can have spaghetti, but just eat the buckwheat noodles. It's super. And then... I'm sure you can make other things like banana bread or whatever, but buckwheat and buckwheat flour or like the little groats. <laughs> I love eating those. They're so good. And yeah, check it out. Cause you don't, carbs are good for you. It's just all the stuff that they put in the carbs mm -hmm. that make them bad. Like uh, when they bleach the flour, that takes away a lot of the nutrients. Mm -hmm. So like white wonder bread is pretty good for photo shoots and that's about it. <laughs> you know, I would not eat it. Mm -mm. But I love the Wonder Bread packaging. Like, we can make, like, an outfit, like a little bandeau out of mm -hmm. the Wonder Bread packaging. <laughs> and then, you know, use the use the bread as, like, um, shoulder pads, mm -hmm. you know? And then do, like, a little skirt with the rest of the loaf. I thought I was bad, Hannah. I thought, my, I thought <laughs> my brain was bad and I could easily just fall down the rabbit hole of a tangent. I think I found someone that's way worse than me. Oh, that means no, so oh much no. to me. Oh, I love no. that. It's amazing, but I'm just, I'm just enjoying how your brain goes from one thing to another thing to another yeah. thing. To another yeah. thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's good for about a couple of hours and then I either run out of steam, <laughs> mm -hmm. I go take a nap, 
or, uh, you know, need to have a snack. Um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes I think my boyfriend is just like, are you done yet? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else about Miss Brittany Klein? Oh, Brittany is, amazes me. I love, she's fearless as well. She had a, uh, she, you know, she did the show and it was really interesting. I was excited to see how her career would go. And uh, it seemed that like the, uh, the world of modeling was, definitely something that she was meant to be a part of and the show you know that show kind of puts a stamp on your forehead that says Tyra Banks CW um and what I mean by that is anywhere you go anybody you talk to in the fashion industry will have a very strong opinion about you being on America's Next Top Model model they're either gonna really love it and they're gonna put you at the front of the show or on the front of the magazine or pay you <laughs> or they are going to despise it and show you where the door is because you're a joke. Um, like I remember one time, like right after the show, I modeled in Dallas and kind of worked my way up because that was my first experience. And I just didn't know if they'd cast me because of the pigtails or like, you know, I'm 5'11", but I was like, I got to see if there's more to this modeling thing. So I started in Texas and I did really well. I ended up getting national um, campaigns for like JC pennies and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so I moved to LA, um, and that was a really interesting whirlwind of, a, of an experience, like my first year living there. Um, but I went to an agency and I remember I was so excited. I think it was one or like one of these really big agencies. And I didn't tell them that I had been on America's Next Top Model because at that point, I had learned this thing that either people love it or they hate it. And so I didn't want to tell them that I'd been on the show. I just handed them my portfolio. And like the, the owner or the head person of this agency was like loving me. Like I felt like there was this really good synergy and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get a contract with this awesome agency. And then her assistant opened up to like the Jaguar photo in my portfolio. And I only had a couple of pictures from top model because I didn't want, I, I had built my book up at that point. So um, the thing is a lot of the top model uh, photos aren't very useful for actual fashion po modeling portfolio because they're so dramatic and dramatized. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the portfolio should just show a model like with barely any makeup on and maybe one or two campaign shots. You know, so that's like, that's why I was using the Jaguar one because that is one of my favorites as well. And so uh, the, the booker is looking at it. She loves it. Her assistant opens it and sees that Jaguar put photo and goes, oh, were you on America's Next Top Model? You were on America's Next Top Model, weren't you? And he was like really excited. About it. I was like, oh my God. Okay. I was like, yeah, it was great. And, and the, the other lady goes, oh, I hate that show it makes people think that they can model and not everybody can model. And I was like, well, um, I'm really glad I got the experience or else I wouldn't be here right now. And then they took my digitals and I did not hear from them. And I was oh, like, I'm so sorry. it's okay. You know, modeling is, is a very interesting world. You know, like you really have to have a thick skin because you're your product. And if people don't like your face or they don't like your body type or they don't want to use you for the photo shoot or have you in your in the agency, it's not personal, but it's personal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's your personality or your person that they don't want or don't see fit. So mm -hmm. you just can't take it personal because there's other people out there that will see the potential in you. And those are the people that deserve your time anyways. You know, if people... Exactly. Yeah, if, if, it, exactly. if the, the right people are the ones who respect you and actually see the, your worth, like see the, the, the crystal, the diamond in the rough mm -hmm. or what, wherever the, you might be in the process. But mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Um, okay, so now I'm going to ask you about <laughs> the talent um, on the show. Mr. J. Manuel. Uh, okay, so Mrs. J is probably one of the most down to earth out of all of them. He actually would get on the bus with us when the cameras weren't rolling. And mm -hmm. the camera crew would be like, they're not allowed to talk. And he'd be mm -hmm. well, the camera crew wouldn't even talk to Miss J that way, actually, but Miss J mm -hmm. would just walk by these people and then start talking to us. Mm -hmm. And he would show us 
I remember at the time he had a digital camera and he was like showing us pictures of him and his husband and telling us about the, how they had met and got married. And it was a really cute story. Um, Mr. J or Miss J? Miss J. Miss J had Miss J had a husband. At the time, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they. I thought that he had a husband. Maybe it was just his boyfriend. But like, he was like, it was a French guy, and I think he's like, yeah. He was saying that at first he didn't tell the guy that he was famous. He didn't want the guy to know that he was famous. And then he, the guy, started noticing that people would like w want to take pictures with Miss J and stuff. And he was like, uh, why do people want to take pictures of you? And he was like, oh. Back in America, I'm a famous uh, puppet maker. <laughs> he, would, he would tell, he told his, his boyfriend he was a puppet maker. Oh. <laughs> okay. What about Mr. J? <laughs> Mr. J, um, he was really nice to me when I ran into him at, at, at this thing called BeautyCon a couple of years ago in New York. Um, so I, I don't hold too much, uh, I don't hold as much as I did before against him, but on the show, I felt like he was not, uh, very patient with me. And I felt like he was just kind of like <sighs> cycle 16, you know what I mean? Like by the time it was, he, yeah, he was just like, yeah, I don't know. Did you did you hear about his um his top model series that he did last year around this time actually where he was he was well ba this is basically how I got started on actually so he started his um top model series where he would talk about every cycle um every Friday and I mentioned it because he said definitely around this time was when he was basically over it. Like he was over it. Like it was yeah. a lot of it was a lot of behind the scenes madness going on, and he was over it. So that's probably what you were feeling from him. Yeah, I know. And then he had an Invisalign, and so sometimes, <laughs> so sometimes when he would get really close to us, and he would be like telling us about the challenge, he would be like spitting on us, and so I'd be like. <laughs> this is awkward he had to you could see his Invisalign and it's okay like I you know get those teeth the way you like them but mm -hmm. uh that Invisalign like <laughs> what about Andre Leon Talley uh Andre Leon Talley I think he's such a floof like he's he was always so floofy like mm -hmm. he was the one who always had like a very floofy outfit it would just be like draping and I love just like his mannerisms like Andre Leon I remember we were in Morocco and we had just landed we had gotten to the palace where we were staying and this it was like all so unreal and uh we were on the uh roof of this palace where they had like Moroccans or like billowing curtains and pillows and we were having tea and crepes like a little platter, like a silver platter came out with like all these different crepes and jams. And uh, Andre Leon Talley was just telling us stories and answering questions. And it was a really cool, like the kind of the first time we got to have that, like in like that really intimate mm -hmm. conversation with him, just not like so overproduced and like dramatized for the show, but more just like, you know, he was really, he was really cool and sweet. Um, Next person is Nigel Barker. Oh gosh. Okay, Nigel. God, isn't he hot? Like <laughs> he's like so cute. He I mean, we he, he was he was one of the he was like he was totally like my he was my type. But um Really? Yeah, I mean I couldn't help like when I was like twenty years old, like having a crush on Nigel and then I remember one of the photo shoots he did, he was like taking pictures and he like got behind me and was like trying to position me a certain way. And I was like, Oh, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then um, he's really cool. So like uh, a couple of years later, I went to a New York fashion week uh, and I was at a show for uh, Vivian Westwood or something like that. Um, and I ran into him and it was so cool. He gave me his card and he was like, keep in touch. Next time you're in New York, you know, like let's shoot or something. And, you know, people say that. And I was like, I, I don't really go to New York very often, but it's like every time I'm there, I miss him or something. But like throughout the year, he'll like 
re he'll respond to my DMs. I'm I'm not trying to hook up with him anymore. I have a boyfriend. <laughs> this is this so is you tried at one time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, it only takes me like one one getting turned down once to get the message. But he's also married, and I would not want to be a homewrecker. Yes, well, good. That's gross. Yeah. And then last but surely not least, Tyra Banks. Oh, Ty Ty. Oh my gosh. Um, I wish her a happy Mother's Day this year because she's the mother of America's Next Top Model. You know, I I totally look up to her like a mom. Um, and I also like, you know, as I have feelings with my own mom that I feel like she emotionally scarred me in a way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, that experience, like the whole America's Next Top Model was amazing and I would never want to trade it for anything or like if I were to go back and do it differently, I definitely would have like said or done something differently when I had to carry a dead severed cow's head um, into a Moroccan. Yeah, but um, I don't think that was Tyra. You know, I kind of want to ask Tyra, like, did you know, Tyra, did you know that they were going to do that? Because then that would kind of change things, I feel like. But I mean, I guess it's probably best not to know because like if she did know, then I would be like, wait, why would you do that? Why would you, why would, that has nothing to do with modeling. Mm -mm. So yeah. But um, I, I feel like Tyra Banks has really opened up the whole fashion industry to more inclusivity. Um, mm -hmm. like I definitely think that she started the trend of, it didn't matter, uh, you know, if you had, uh, you know, like something different going on with your skin or something mm -hmm. different going on with your body type or something different going on with your, uh, mental, like she, she was someone who was very, she's always embraced people of all different types. Like it didn't. And, and so I really do appreciate like what she's done as far as like, uh, bringing a whole uh, new kind of aspect to modeling. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think that I would have had such a great career in modeling had it not been for being on America's Next Top Model. Oh, that's amazing. That's yeah. Amazing. I definitely like it. It was a good, it was a good uh, start to my career for sure. Oh, well. Mama Ty, Mama Ty. That is the end of Auntie and Roll Call, y'all. We still haven't gotten to the fan question. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, it's okay. Hannah. It's okay, yeah, Hannah Bar. Are you ready for them? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, here they go. Even though you've answered a lot of them while, while you've been talking, so I'm not gonna I'm gonna skip over them. If I pause, it's because I'm reading it and skipping over it. Yeah, no worries. Okay, so the first one you've already talked about the um the freak out. A lot of people wanted to know, do you know that this is Ashley.morgan.fink? How often is she told that she looks like Leo, which formerly she was known as Anna Lay from Cycle 11, but oh. now she's known as, um, she came out as non-binary. She changed her name. Her name is now Leo. But anyways, they said, how, how often is it that people say you remind them of her or that you guys look alike? Uh, it used to happen all the time. That's why I auditioned for America's Next Top Model. Because... I used to watch the show for like the photography and the fashion. I was obsessed, but I never saw myself as a model. Remember, like I never modeled before. Wow. So I had always loved acting and photography and people would stop me at school and be like, you look like Annalie Tipton, you know? And really? God, yeah, so can we please get this clip to, to now? That is so amazing. Leo. You, you, yes. you try it out because of them. I tried out because of them. Yeah. And then um, I remember at the like casting, one of the one. Yeah, I know. Right. That's what's so cool about the show. Like I said, is like these people inspire more people to model. And I think that's really cool. You know, I would never tell somebody you can't model. If you don't believe in yourself, I'm like, no, you, you're definitely not gonna be able to do it. Mm -hmm. You got to believe in yourself. But if you feel like you want to model, do it. It's so much fun. And it should be something that everybody can participate in. You know, I love fashion. Like, uh, there should be a piece of wardrobe that makes any individual feel excited about life. You know? Especially because, like, whatever outfit you're wearing, if you die in that outfit, that's your forever outfit. <laughs> Hannah? But, yeah. <laughs> Yes. So I, 
Anna Lee, Anna Lee Tipton, I ran into her, him, uh, them. I ran yeah. into mm -hmm. them. Sorry, at the time, they were Anna Lee. Mm -hmm. And I ran into them in Hollywood. And they must have had, had like an all-nighter or something because they were coming out of a hotel room. It was like 10 a.m. in the morning. And they looked kind of flustered. <laughs> And I was so excited because I felt like I saw like a unicorn. Night. Like, I, I, I felt like mm -hmm. I saw, like, some, it's okay. I felt like I saw somebody that I was never going to see in real life, right? So I run up to them, and mm -hmm. I'm like, hi, Annalie Tipton. People say that we look alike. I'm Hannah. It's mm -hmm. good to meet you. I thought that I thought that people were also were telling her, you look like Hannah. But <laughs> apparently, <laughs> nobody told them that. And mm -hmm. so they did not know who I was. <laughs> and it was like, she was, they, at the, they were like, huh? And like, they were so like, why are you talking to me? Like, <laughs> I'm your doppelganger. It's good uh -huh. to you. Well, did you explain who you were? I was like, uh, <laughs> um, yes, I did. And then they were like, oh, oh, cool. And then <laughs> it turned out, yeah, it was so awkward. So, so awkward. Is this uh, a real story? Really? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then <laughs> actually we had another time that we crossed paths, but this time I was too embarrassed to talk to them because of how terrible the first time had gone. Mm -hmm. We were on a plane going to Miami and I was traveling with my dog um, and she, they were also traveling with their dog and they had a big dog. I had Are a you dog. serious right now? Yes. So we both get on the plane and I totally saw them and I knew who this was. And I was like, it's my doppelganger, but I'm not going to talk to them because it's, it would be so awkward like the first time. And then they probably think I'm stalking them. And uh, okay, so they're sitting like two seats in front of me on the plane with the big dog in like the, you know, kind of the area where there's more leg room. So their dog is on the floor and my dog was in my lap. And at some point on the flight, one of the dogs on the plane took a shit. <laughs> my dog was in my lap and it had not pooped but they came up to me the flight attendant was like excuse me did your dog poop because everybody could smell it there weren't nobody was wearing masks right it was like you know 2017 or something and I was like no my dog did not poop but that that person over there has a dog <laughs> I was like Really? I think that their dog had pooped and they tried to hide it. And that's my story. <laughs> that is funny. I'm not even going to ask any more questions about that. Okay. I feel like we could play. I feel like uh, me and Leo could totally play siblings in a movie or a TV show. So if anybody's a writer out there and has a script like that or wants to pitch it to Leo, please don't cast anybody else but me to play their sibling. I mean, you can cast other people, but please let me play one of their siblings. Um, I feel like that would be so fun. That would be a lot of fun. This this is fun. Okay. Nicole mm -hmm. Ackerman wants to know, how was the drawing challenge on episode two that they only showed a minute of on TV? Was there <gasps> more to it? Because everyone seemed to be crying, but they yeah, did not show enough to be able to figure out why. Oh, there was so much more. Okay, so first off, the guy that was, like, a therapist was actually a bully. Like, he was really, like, saying, using words, and his tone was very aggressive towards each one of us, and he was asking us a lot of questions. So, yes, we started crying very quickly because he was, like, digging. He was, like, digging into our hearts for, you know, just really delicious morsels of emotion to eat. Like, he was just the creepiest, like, the way that he was getting mm. into it. And then he wanted us to all draw our, our demons. Um, so I started drawing a demon. And um, there's a picture on the internet. If you Google hard enough, Hannah Cycle 16 demon or something like that. And you'll find a picture of me like all upset with my, my drawing. And it's like, like an ugly looking, it'll take you a minute. <laughs> You're gonna like, you might want to start mining Bitcoin while you do that because it's going to take you a second. But uh, <laughs> it'll, it'll probably take you one Bitcoin to find One that. Bitcoin. But it's out there. I know it is. And uh, yeah, I really wish that they would release like the full footage from that because 
we all had demons, but uh, Jacqueline's demon was definitely the funniest because she was like, you're, she's, she was writing like, you're a baby. Stop being a big baby. That was her demon. Really? You're a baby, Jacqueline, and you need to grow up and stop acting like a baby. That was her demon, yeah. Oh. <laughs> y'all, we gotta break I was into kind the safe. Of... We gotta break into the safe. We need to, y'all keep telling me what the password is. Yes, okay. Miguel underscore De Leon, on your Austin and Alley wiki page, it says you learned how to cut and color hair when you were 12 years old. I'm assuming it has something to do with your dad because you said yeah. he's a hairdresser. Yeah. They're asking, did you have, do you have any critiques or did you have any critiques when you got your makeover or when you saw the other girls' makeovers? I kind of felt like I got like, I, I felt like I got a really weak makeover. They literally just touched up my highlight. I don't know if like well, that's I a guess good that's, thing, I guess. Yeah, you came in yeah, I guess that that is definitely a compliment, especially to my dad at being a hairdresser. That they were like, "Oh God," you know, like instead of mm -hmm. being like, "Oh my God, your color is terrible," they were like, "Well, we'll just I guess we'll just touch up the highlights," you know. And mm -hmm. then I thought I was getting all my hair cut off because they were just touching up the scalp. And I, I told the, the like colorist, I was like, are they going to cut off my hair? And she's like, why do you think that? And I was like, because you're only doing the, the roots. And then she did like a couple at the end. And I was like, <sighs> so yeah, I'm really glad I got out of that without getting like a buzz cut. But it would have been so fun to do like something like really red hair or mm -hmm. I don't know, like something different and be like, well, America. Uh, America's Next Top Model made me do it. Like, that would have been mm -hmm. such a fun excuse to shave my head. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I think I wouldn't have liked it very much. <laughs> Any fun behind-the-scenes stories about Makeover Day that you remember? <laughs> yes. It was also Halloween. And uh, I remember the woman who was sewing in um, Molly's weave. I remember seeing that process, like, as someone who's been in a salon and grown up in a salon in my dad's world, like, so first they braided her hair like an ice cream swirl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she just had like a braid that went boop. And then they started sewing in like all of this extra fluffy hair. Mm -hmm. And and Molly looks so angry. And then we got on, we got on the bus and that was a really long day. And so we were all a little tired, a little cranky, uh, a little hysterical uh, because Alexandria could not stop laughing and pointing at Molly. <laughs> she was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and it was awesome. Cackle. Like, it was awesome. Yeah, she was cackling and she just like kept pointing. <laughs> she, kept pointing she kept pointing and laughing. She kept pointing and laughing and it was making me laugh. And then uh, Molly goes, Happy Halloween, you bitch. No, she said something like, happy Halloween, bitch. It was just like, <laughs> awesome. It was a good time. It was a good day. <laughs> she, definitely, <laughs> she definitely got the cup of ramen weave. That's a good one. It looked like ramen, only it like, looked, coming out of her head. I don't... <laughs> All right, Corey, Corey <laughs> wants to know, you know, Oliver, this isn't just for Hannah, but I would love to, oh, okay. You know, Oliver, this isn't just for Hannah, but I would love to add a question to your usual list. What was your favorite challenge slash least favorite challenge? We always talk about photo shoots, but some of the a and challenges were even more iconic, especially runways. Um, okay, so the fire challenge was actually really hard. And if you watch the footage from that, you'll see it in my face. Um, yeah, I will say this, um, hashtag fire moolie. Um, but yeah, that fire runway was so intense. Like they had us wearing mitts. Um, so that we could light our hands on fire, but you could still feel the heat. <laughs> um, and it was in like a cool warehouse downtown LA and like right next door, they were making cars for Burning Man. And I was like, can I go next door? Like, can I just go hang out next door and you guys do this runway show? And they were like, mm -hmm. no, you're walking through fire next. And those were like the least comfortable heels that I'd worn on the show. So that was also really hard. Um, but also the bubble walking on water was terrible. That was just so annoying. Um, and then Brittany made it look like it was super easy. So I don't know. I think I was just like, yeah, I was 
just a terrible walker. Like I did not know how to walk on land and now they want me to walk on water in a bubble. Yeah, it was just like setting me up for failure. They actually filmed the audience reacting to uh, the girls falling in the water before we did the runway show. Oh, do you remember that- filming it twice? Yes. Yeah. And that was what really pissed me off. Uh, about reality TV. I was like, we haven't even fallen yet and they were already feeling us falling. I was like, that's not fair. <laughs> I was Welcome like, can you, can you at least, yeah. I was like, does that not fit with the schedule to film uh, the reaction shots while they happen? I was like, are you kidding me? And then none of us fell, so they made us do it again. And that's when all the girls ended up flopping in the water. I just looked like I was like cousin it or like Frankenstein. Like I had, <laughs> I had such a goo- like a ghoulish walk. I was like, <sighs> like down in the little water bottle. If you look at me, it looked like a Neanderthal. Like my hair is just like in my eyes, and I'm still giving. I'm still trying to figure out what smizing was. So I'm like, you know, my eyes are just like dead inside. Uh huh. Tori wants to know. <laughs> are, are, <laughs> Carol Kitzik, I'm sorry. Oh, you already talked about the fire um, runway challenge. Okay. Teron Sandstrom wants to know, yes, I love her. Could you ask her about the T-Trey dance? Was Alexandria oh, yeah. first picked as the winner? Because it sounded strange with Miss J's voiceover when he said Alexandria was the, was the runner-up. Oh, interesting. Um, well, I remember they said that I looked like a hula, a hula dancer and not a oh, tea tray dancer. Brown. Uh, and not a tea tray, tea tray, that's really hard to say, tea tray dancer. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, so now we're just really like splitting hairs here. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I did not sign up for America's Next Top Model to be judged on my tea tray dancing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry, your dancing skills were a little too Hawaiian style. We <laughs> wanted to see more more Moroccan style for this. So yeah, um, Brittany, uh, sh- did she win that? Like that question about whether or not Alexandria had won. I'm not sure what that voiceover is all about. Um, I'm trying to remember who won that. Guys in the chats, because I don't remember. I don't remember who won that challenge. Who won that challenge, guys? Help us out. Help us out. Help us out. And uh, somebody asked if the bubble runway, like, did, yes, we had to do it twice. Mm -hmm. They made everybody do it twice. And if nobody fell the second time, they were going to make us do it a third time. So we were like, okay, somebody just fall so we can go eat some food. (laughs) They said Brittany won. Okay, so Brittany won that challenge. Yeah, I remember her wearing that. Okay, so yeah, I think she won it fair and square and there was like nothing else to be said about it. But that might have also been the the episode that Lexi or Lex went home. So there could have been something about that too, like as far as how they did the sound bites Mm -hmm. over. I don't know. Smart girl. Sarah No is saying she was one of the girls who had to walk home after the fire walk runway challenge. Oh, I yeah. was wondering how bad the neighborhood they had to walk through actually was since she'd make a comment about needing some quote unquote brass knuckles and pepper spray. <laughs> also curious how long the walk was. Love you, Hannah. Oh, I love you. Um, yeah, that, that was a really long walk. Uh, we we luckily were staying downtown and the photo shoot happened at a warehouse downtown. So it's not like we had to walk downtown to like West Hollywood or Santa Monica. Cause that would have taken two days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it took about 45 minutes, I think. Um, and I just, yeah. So downtown LA is really sketchy. Like fashion, the, the fashion strip or the like uh, spring street where like a lot of the uh, same, Santee Alley, where a lot of the really fun fashion shopping is, or like uh, you can find a really cool fabrics to make your own designs. That's one part of downtown. If you make a wrong turn, you end up on Skid Row, where it's tent city. There's tents lining the street, and like you feel like you're in like Walking Dead or something, because there's some there's some of the people just don't seem like they're uh, all with it, and they might eat your brains. 
So, um, yeah, it was very scary. And it's gotten scarier, unfortunately. Like, the homeless population in L.A. is really, really bad. And there's all sorts of violence and things that happen with homeless people. And I feel bad because they just don't have uh, proper care, the right places, to a lot of uh, the right resources. Like, it's just really sad. So, yeah, it was scary. And I could, I actually really want a pair of, like, super stylish brass knuckles. That would be so fun. <laughs> what 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 do you remember about that trip? The the trip walking home. Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely remember like guys following us for a split second. Um, but that might have been also because we were being filmed. Um, but it felt like we were being like we were always kind of being watched. Um, like literally, like the cameras were always rolling. Um, but it definitely felt like we were like being kind of like, uh, clocked, you know, it was, mm -hmm. it was weird mm -hmm. and we were wearing heels. So that was very uncomfortable. I think I took my shoes off at one point. I would have too. Sure. Miguel underscore De Leon is saying how stressful were the ghosties in LA? We barely saw any of your footage from ghosties. Uh, so, sorry. What was the first part of how that? Somebody was talking how about Molly's vibe. How stressful were the uh oh? How stressful were the ghosties in LA? We barely saw any of your footage from ghosties. The the ghosties were really stressful because we didn't have GPS. We just had a map, like a physical mm -hmm. map. And who uses maps anymore? Like physical maps. Like you use like your apps on your phone. So Molly O'Connell uh, is in the chat. <laughs> Molly's like, oh, bitch, I didn't bring my vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> she wants she wants to clarify the tea. Bitch, this tea is murky with some. <laughs> I, Molly, I how promise big was you... the vibrator? This big? I think it was this big. Ooh. Ooh. I love ah. you too. Aw. Oh <laughs> she said gosh, she probably yes. did. Yes, thank you. Oh my gosh, yes. Molly is like such a badass too. Like I love how she's, you know, she was on Project Runway. No, Molly, yeah. I told you were on Project Runway. Yeah, she's legit. I want to go, can we invite Molly to our spa day where we get like, Molly, do you want to come with us to get our um, boxes waxed? So Molly, so our triangles. Hannah said, "Well, baby, this definitely is a trip. <laughs> it's like a, it's, it's like a pentagon, okay? It's a lot <laughs> oh, I like that. Mine's a hexagon. Uh, yeah. Girl, you want to get lost in this Bermuda triangle, honey? Some yes. stretches. <laughs> Molly, Molly, do you get Botox? Like, I've been thinking about, like, what kind of, like, <laughs> I want to get those, like, crazy things that, like, make your cheeks, like, uh, the person, uh, what's her name? <laughs> a a Angelina Jolie in um, Maleficent. She's got those, like. Ooh, those Lady yeah. Gaga monster thingies. Yeah. That'd be Molly, cool. what are you doing? Everyone wants you to join the chat. Do you want to join a little bit later once I finish asking Hannah all her questions? Please, Molly, don't tell me no. Botox are yours. Yes, Molly. I love it. Do you do micro needling too? On the eyebrow? Micro oh, micro needling. Like I'm talking about like the whole face. What is you talking about micro needling on your what is that what is that? So it pokes your face. And it forms like it, it actually like I don't know if the science like the, what the science is exactly behind it, but it cre increases the collagen. Like it tricks your skin into producing more collagen because it's like poking like with these little needles. <laughs> so you like come out like craft. you come out like sunburned looking. Like your skin just got like slapped in the face like a thousand times with a sunburn. But yeah. I'm I'm afraid of I'm afraid of certain things when it comes to like skin, teeth, and I'm the afraid. older you get, the more willing you are to go through anything to like keep shit lifted. Well, here's my here's my math. No, I'm not, I'm not going to be inappropriate anymore, y'all. I was going to say a very dirty joke, but I'm keep it to myself. All is right. It, is it about? <laughs> what is it about, Hannah? <laughs> That's what keeps me young. I'm doing facial exercises. 
I got my facial facial I exercises quit, in. Though. I'm done. I'm, I quit. I quit. I retire. I retire. I, I'm handing over. <laughs> Whistle why you twerking? I can't I'm going to break my back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all, let's... <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a really good twerk uh, YouTube tutorial that I follow. It's not one that I've, I've created. It's one that I really love. If anybody wants it, uh, just let me know. She's awesome. She gets you to squeeze one butt cheek oh. and then squeeze the other butt cheek. And then when you get, <laughs> then when you get, when you get control of one butt cheek, and the other butt cheek slowly, then you can go a little faster, and then all of a sudden you're twerking. It's like bum, bada bum, bada bum, bada bum with your butt. <laughs> I haven't gone to that yet, but she she showcases what you can do, what you can accomplish if you practice your butt. <laughs> it's awesome. She can make her butt move so fast, like oh. she has goals. Oh my God, Hannah! <laughs> can you stop? I really, I'm stop. <laughs> I just, I love how much fun we're having. This is so okay, fun. Okay, y'all. Where am I? Where am I, girl? You, you didn't even finish telling us about ghost season, LA. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> can you convince someone to get me a prescription for Adderall? <laughs> Um, I just think we yeah. show them the vlog. Right. <laughs> show them the footage. Show the footage. Show the footage. <laughs> <Proof. laughs> so those ghosties, uh, they were really hard, and I ended up only making it to, like, three out of five. I just skipped the last two and got to the end spot in Beverly Hills because I knew that if I was late I was going to be cut completely and most of the girls did that they they had the same strategy so Jacqueline only went to one go see which was embarrassing um and Kasha the other girls we all ended up going to three uh or Kasha might have gone to four um and then Alexandria got to all of those castings but alexandria or lex is also born and raised in la so she knows how to get around the city mm -hmm. so a, she shouldn't have gotten a map not that she even needed it like but come on that molly says she went to four time. oh well there you go molly you gotta one up me once again <laughs> <laughs> all right Beck underscore Wolo is asking, I remember you crying at the brick. Miss Cookie, that's my dog over here, y'all drinking water. I'm just like, girl, is it really oh, that serious? She's slurping. God damn it, did you hear her? <laughs> she was just like slurpy, go slurpy. Ahead, Mama, no, uh, go ahead, drink your water, go ahead. I just was, that's, hey. That's how I sound when I get a margarita. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the underscore like, Wolo. Uh-uh, Hannah, focus. Uh-uh, you're not going to do this to me, girl. Focus, focus. You're not about to do this to me. I remember you crying at the breast cancer photo shoot challenge with Nigel for being, oh. quote-unquote, unmemorable. Was there more to that situation than we saw? I always felt like you had that kind of reaction to something more than what we saw on TV. <sighs> Well, you know, that was the night that Nigel turned me down. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Right. Tell the truth. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I really. Okay. So I feel like uh, I was really frustrated because I hadn't won a challenge and I had picked. Um... Oh, hi, Cookie. Is it Cookie or is it Cookie? Cookie. <gasps> is that a, a, a Whippet or a like Greyhound, miniature Greyhound? Oh, my God. You're the first person to ever get. She's an Italian Greyhound. Oh, oh my gosh! We want—that's the kind of dog we want to adopt. We want to find one. We want to rescue one. I'll Wait, rescue so her. hi, cu hi, hey, hi, cutie cookie. pie. Look, hi, look, cookie. Mama. Oh my gosh! Oh, how old is she? Four. Hi. Oh, she's so cute. Mm -hmm. Does she like to cuddle with you? Hannah. I will Dresses. wake up and she's, I don't know how she finds her way in, in the crevices of my body. It's just, and I'm just like, mama, I can't roll over right now because you're right Aww. here. You're right here. 
If so anything cool. ever happens to me, you just throw her in the casket because she's not going to. <laughs> she's not going to last. She's not going to last. Cookie, <laughs> thirsty cookie. So, um... <laughs> girl, can't you just read you, girl. <laughs> what were we talking about? No, I, I don't, don't even know. Trying to stay on topic. <laughs> Um, um, where are we? We were talking about the unmemorable thing with Nigel Barker and you crying. So people wanted to know, was oh, there anything more that happened in that moment that we didn't see, considering how vigorously you were emotionally I, crying? I was, I was vigorously spinning this little ribbon to make a, make a spiral. And I worked really hard on my spiral. And I really wanted that shoot to mean something. And I, you know, uh, I'm a perfection. I'm a perfectionist, like, believe it or not, I'm a Virgo. And when I don't do something right, or the way that I wanted to do it, it really mm -hmm. makes me mad. And so the fact that me I too. didn't win that challenge, like I picked out my outfit, I wore a silver jumpsuit, like I felt like mm -hmm. I looked really awesome. I felt like I, I just felt like I did really well. And then for Nigel to be like, Oh, Hannah, hmm. Well, I guess my only note for you is that you're unmemorable. And like, nobody likes hearing that about themselves. And it's like, I'm wearing pigtails, man. Like, it was just frustrating. Like, I, I feel like there's something, I don't know. Uh, I really, it's hard to, <laughs> It's stupid to complain about it, but like sometimes it's really frustrating being a, a blonde. Um, you're, I feel like my people's expectations of me are like right here. <laughs> and, and my expectations of myself are like super high. And mm -hmm. so like that photo shoot was like, just kind of, I just felt really like bummed out that I, you know, hadn't won it. I really wanted to win a, a Ford. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, because that, that was what the winner got. It was a car. Alexandra, and she got that car. Lex, yeah. And and that was that was kind of like, what? I thought Lex didn't deserve it, but yeah. Speaking of Cookie, relax, Mama. Um, Speaking of that whole situation, the next question from Holiday197, was there anything that happened during Britney's meltdown during that four challenge in the judging panel that we did not see? Before oh you begin, my God. hold on, before you begin, do you know that when I interview Kasha, she does not remember anything about Britney's breakdown at panel? She doesn't remember really? anything. No, she said she doesn't remember. <laughs> Maybe Britney gave her some of her Xanax that night. Cause she, at one point, Britney, Britney actually had to give me a Xanax the night that uh, Nigel called me unmemorable. All right, yeah, low key T right here, yo. But like, I was in that. I don't know if anybody remembers this, but it was the little closet that we would do our own like journal check-ins with the camera. And I'm like, I'm memorable. I'm from Houston, Texas. And I remember people being like, "Were you drunk?" And no, there was no alcohol in the house in LA because uh, the. The people who were 21 and up were allowed to get alcohol, but they were all really smart. They were like, we're not getting shit faced. Like, mm -hmm. we're not going to be, you know, when the girls younger aren't allowed to. And then when we got to Morocco, we were like, bring on the booze. Like, we ordered mm -hmm. wine and they like brought it to us because we were in a different country. It was great. But yeah, so um, Kasha didn't remember the breakdown, but I have a list of, of uh, suspicions. Um, and I think that that was a really intense night. I was actually standing right behind Brittany on the platform of stairs where all the girls stand during the panel and Tyra Banks, her, her laser eyes were smoldering into Brittany. And like, I was feeling the like residual impact and I was praying. I had my hands together. You can't see it because, like, you see Brittany behind, like, and I, but I am like, I've got my hand in prayer, and I'm like, oh my God, please, 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 just let this end. This is so uncomfortable. And I was like, please don't send Brittany home, you know, because remember, her and I linked arms at the beginning. She was my comrade. Like, we wanted to, um, 
you know, we wanted to make it to the end together. She was one of my closest friends on the show. So it was, it felt like, I felt like I was getting yelled at. <laughs> like I, because we actually kind of were, like all the girls were really pissed that, um, out, that Lex had won the car. So we were all acting like brats on set, but Brittany was mouthing the most. And that's who Nigel called out at the panel and said that she had a really bad attitude in front of the client. And that's what Tyra Banks got really mad about. She was like, you need to have good sportsmanship. Doesn't matter if you don't agree with the client. That's who the client picked, right? And it, that's really how it is in the modeling world. You can't like throw a fit because you didn't get picked for a fashion show or runway show. You know, that's not gonna make get you hired. It's gonna get you fired. <laughs> So I'm 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 scared to ask this question, but I I, I mean I slightly have to because the people are asking. <laughs> well, be, <laughs> before before I jump to that, is there anything um is there anything you want to add to what you saw happen at panel? I I believe it was Molly who said that um basically said basically Brittany was having a um a panic attack and like the show really didn't like respond to it that way like they really didn't give her the attention probably someone having a panic attack needed okay well to be fair i had the first panic attack um when the bees happened like i literally couldn't breathe mm -hmm. um and i think that that's a fair thing to say that they did not uh in those situations where we were having a really strong um emotional responses to things that were happening under the stress and pressure of the show that there was no like you know therapist on deck or a person on deck that could help us sort of through the emotions that we were having um and you know like it, it's kind of one of those things i think uh this comedian neil brennan um explains it really well he says that um emotional health like when a person's depressed it's not the same as a cold like when somebody has a cold, people aren't like, he, he's just faking that. He's just faking those sniffles. He's not actually sick, you know? But when somebody, like people don't say that, but when somebody's like claiming I have, I'm having a panic attack or I don't feel healthy emotionally, I'm depressed or whatever it might be, there, a lot of people are like, oh, you're just saying that. But, you know, nobody can really know how a person is feeling except for that person. And when those are calls for help, you know? so. Yeah, there was definitely no like emotional EMT on deck. <laughs> like we were just thrown into the bus and sent home and told to shut up when the mics were off. Do right? you we re weren't allowed to talk when we had to go to bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no bedtime stories because the mics weren't on. And there just, were cameras like in the corner watching every move. <laughs> just Molly's um... <laughs> Vibrator right. in the background. <laughs> what is that hum? Girl, what is this hum I'm hearing? Um, is somebody mo moaning? <laughs> Do you remember anything from the backstage conversation that happened once you guys got to the back after Britney's um, moment in panel? Uh, I really, uh, that's, that's a, the thing is, is when you're in that back room, the back room where we're waiting between like the judges deciding who's going to get sent home and uh, when we're waiting for the girl to go get her luggage, that back room is a white room without any windows. It's very stark. There's just chairs lining the, it's a very small room where we're all waiting. And like I said, when their camera's not on the room, we're not allowed to talk. So I'm just sitting across from Brittany, who's having a panic attack, who's really, really upset, and we're not allowed to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. um, when we're on the bus going home, I don't remember the cameras rolling. So I, we really did not, there was a lot of moments that you don't see because they were not allowed to happen. Mm -hmm. Like the, the cameras, as much as they tried filming constantly, like when people, when we're driving, a lot of times you, like that's just a health issue that they can't film. Like they can't have camera people filming mm -hmm. all the time. You know what I mean? So it's just like. Well, th what this moment that they're talking about is when you guys were backstage before anyone went home. This was like immediately after the whole panel moment, and people in the comments are talking about it. They're saying like how Lex was crying on stage, but then when you guys got to the back, she was like calling people loud, 
and like there was like conversation there were more conversation going on so the, the people want to know is there any more of that small moment that we did not see once all of that mayhem unleashed itself on uh yeah i would not put it behind lex to be like very manipulative in that way like just like showing face like oh they're all picking on me and then I, behind the scene being like you know calling people out yeah she had those judges thinking she was one way she was very good at like manipulating situations i mean i was like impressed i was like oh girl that's good like i can't do that shit like that's good you know, she would be so good at like victimizing herself but you know what I would have done the same thing um, Lex did, to be quite honest. The moment that, what's the name, would have called me out on panel, I wouldn't have been the devil that she's talking about. I would have been, I would have, <laughs> I don't know why, what the, <laughs> yes, you like that cookie, huh? And when I got to the back, you motherfucking hoes did that in front of her, I'm going to terrorize y'all bitches to the day I leave. Yeah, Ooh, I mean, that's, I Ooh, y'all would have hated me until I, I would have terrorized y'all. But like, I totally respect. I totally respect that because, like, you know, Lex is just trying to do the best she can. Brittany's just trying to do the best she can. I'm just trying to do the best we can. We're all coming from different perspectives and angles, mm -hmm. right? So, like, Lex, I really like her story. She told them her aunt had can breast cancer, and I really didn't believe that, whether it's true or not. I just felt like. You know, there was something about the way that she won that just did not make any sense to any of us. And Brittany was the one speaking up, and Brittany got Tyra's wrath. <laughs> we buy you, Tyra. Okay. Mm. So Holiday One Nine Seven already did that. You already talked about um, Franca Sosani earlier. So. Past them to Silva wants to know, do you know anything about why there were only five girls who went overseas instead of the usual six? Was it because Jacqueline lost her papers? No, but I love that. That is so, so funny because Jacqueline would be the girl that's like, oh my God, I forgot my passport. But no, <laughs> uh, it was, I, I have a feeling it was because of the girl, I forgot her name again, the one who, who quit. Andre. Andre, I think it was because Andre quit that they just, you know, they had an, an episode short of, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So they just ended up, but um, I feel like didn't on my cycle, was it on my cycle where they, where they thought that they were going to eliminate somebody, but they didn't. That was another cycle. I don't know. It's weird how now I start getting reality confused. Mm -hmm. Oh, me <laughs> like, all the time. Definitely doing this in my brain. All y'all were on the same cycle. Don't right? even ask me. Yes, my brain is so fried, so fried, fried. It's but like I'm... all the it's all the time in front of ring lights. Oh yes, like I'm getting <laughs> I'm hypnotized. It's all just, uh -huh. yes. yeah. So Carol Kiss Kisslick again is asking, did you like Morocco? And are there any good stories from there that did not make the air? You already gave us the butchery hutchery story. Are there any other stories oh. that you want to share? Well, right when we landed, we had been on a really long, like multiple flights getting to this, this amazing location. Um, and I like still don't really know where exactly on the planet it is. Like, I think it's in Africa, uh, but Morocco is really, really cool. It and is. It's so, it it's is. so far off. Of, like, it's Africa. Yeah. It's Africa. It's, it's Africa, y'all. So like we took multiple planes and the last plane we took was a rickety old plane from like the 70s. And I was like, Brittany, you got any more of those fannies? Cause like, that was scary. I was getting anxiety from that. And then we finally landed and it'd been long flight. And we went straight from landing to the streets of Morocco where they surprised us, surprised us with monkeys on our shoulders. And that's another picture you'll probably find on the internet is us like, <laughs> there were real monkeys like pooping on our shoulder and we're like, oh, this is so cute, get the monkey off. And then we went to a Moroccan meal where they served seven courses of all the different types of delicious Moroccan food. And after like the third course, I'm like, God, we must be done. 
and it just keeps coming. And I've been like trying everything. Like the first couple of courses, I'm like eating all the jams. At this point, carbs don't exist because I've made it this far on America's Next Top Model. I'm going to eat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I was just like trying everything. And then all of a sudden, like food kept coming. And then it was like chicken tagine. And, and we were all just like so full. We'd been drinking all this mint tea and it was super delicious, but we'd eaten so much. And the Moroccan people are so hospitable that they'd just been like, you know, just overfeeding us. After that, you know, without sleeping, having flown across the country, like, across the world, we then go to a casting. So we were sleep deprived, gorged, like completely full to our freaking heads of food. And then we had to get into like designer clothes. And that's just not a good feeling when they're like trying to zip up an outfit and you're like, sorry, just ate like eight people's worth of food, mm -hmm. you know? And um, yeah, but then they put a cone on me, uh, a cone dress and it was great. So I ended up getting her. I mean, that's basically what I remember of like the Moroccan, there were lots of kittens in the alleyway. I thought they were cute. And then the locals were like, no, you do not pet the kittens. I was like, really? They're so cute. And they were like, no, no, no. But then when I got eliminated, what was really fun, me, Lex, and Kasha got to go shopping. And I love mm -hmm. shopping so much. Like, I don't have to buy anything. Just, like, window shopping is enough for me. Um, but I definitely picked up some really fun little trinkets when I was shopping in the souk. That just goes for miles. The souk is the Moroccan marketplace and mm -hmm. there's like all these spices it smells amazing and then it doesn't smell very good and then you walk again and it smells great it's like very interesting how like there's a butcher shop and then there's a flower shop or like a spice shop and then we got to a place where there was actually a medicine man and he had a really cool little like it almost felt like harry potter it was like very whimsical like diagonally where like mm -hmm. he had all these little jars of like different like things in the jars Relax. and one jar he, it was like an apothecary like there was mm -hmm. just a, a medicine man right and one jar had water with little leeches swimming in it and i go what are the leeches for and he said when a man when a woman wants a man to fall in love with her she takes some of his sperm and she puts it in a jar of leeches and the leeches will suck on the sperm and then he'll fall in love with her. And I was like, okay, all right, that's, that's interesting. There was baby, little baby iguanas, like this big. You could buy mm -hmm. hawks. <laughs> well, see, here's my question. That was question. really cool. Here's my question. How does a woman capture- Get the sperm? <laughs> capture the sperm in such a way that she can preserve it long enough to drop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, you know, I have some really fun facts about sperm. <laughs> I'm so scared to hear them, but go ahead, Hannah. Did you know that sper some sperm swim in circles? Really? Yeah. And it makes me wonder, is that why I don't know how to get around? Like, is that why I, like, get lost really often was i one of the sperm that like swim around circles and like accidentally found an egg but did you know that there's also some sperm that will actually uh poison the other sperm they're really feisty little little creatures and they they're racing towards the egg and those little sperm that swim around in circles get bullied by the other sperm wow it's very fascinating any more any more sperm back uh, I'm still working on it, uh, but uh... <laughs> so I went to David St. Uh, do you remember David St. John from the cycle? Yeah. Uh huh. He was a um. The pr everybody he's not who a producer. It. Mm -hmm. he's like a, but what was his what was his thing? It, but uh, well, I'm I'm friends with him because he was a producer on the show I just did earlier okay, this year. Yeah. But I went and visited him. I went and visited him in Seattle about a month ago. And guys, I still have to give you guys that vlog. I'm going to edit it tonight. I promise. I'm going to stay up and edit it tonight and put it out for Saturday. I promise. But anyways, I, in his home, he has photos from like all you know from different places and whatnot. And Dave, I don't know if Dave is still watching. I doubt. But I'm almost sure there is a photo of either Mr. J 
or Miss J. It's a Polaroid in Morocco. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, Morocco it's up in David's house. Yeah, it was really cool. There were roses everywhere and camels and uh, you know hookah bars, and it was just it was a really really cool place. Like just such an awesome spot um, on our planet. Like it's got a lot of like uh, culture and. There's just something that's like kind of untapped about it. Like it's not commercial, commercialized in any way. Like the only thing that we saw that was, that represented anything from America was like uh, a Coca-Cola uh, vending machine or something. Like I remember seeing Coca-Cola at one like gas, like sort of structure on the road towards the desert. But other than that, it's like very different than America. <laughs> very, very different. No. I'm laughing because someone in the comments said they love sperm. <laughs> yeah, actually, a lot of people love sperm. And one person, I love what you said about sperm be egging it on. I love that. That's very clever. <laughs> All right. Lady underscore males wants to know, how do you feel about the camel photo shoot? It, lo it looked like you did so well in the footage that was shown, but the photo they ended up choosing for panel was so boring. I wish we could have seen your original film. Yeah, that was another one where I felt really ripped off about like, cause I like me and the photographer definitely had like that chemistry that you, that's really important when you're doing a photo shoot. Um, and that happened a lot of times on Top Model where like one of the girls would come home after the shoot and we'd all be talking about it and somebody would be like, my shoot went really well today. It was so much fun. Me and the photographer really got along and it felt like Mr. J really liked it. And if Mr. J liked it, then the judges are gonna love it. And then when you'd go to the, fo the the panel, the judges would have a totally different opinion. So that was my my experience is like, I felt like I did awesome. And uh, first off, I felt I was like gonna do really well on a camel because I came from Texas. Like I grew up riding horses. I was like, mm -hmm. how hard can riding a camel be, mm -hmm. right? Like I totally thought I had it in the back. Then I got on the camel and I was like, ow, this thing is so hard. Like Ooh. camels are not, Camels are not like riding horses. They're more like riding like brick houses. <laughs> like they're very, like they're very strong, stiff creatures and then they spit. So they were really, yeah. Um, one fun fact. So the glasses that the guy, the sunglasses that the guy who's pulling my camel in the photo is actually one of the cast Wrangler's sunglasses. Really? Uh, yeah, so I, I can't remember if like he was squinting and the photographer was like we need more fashion on him does anybody have a pair of sunglasses and like the amy came with her she just she was like i have my sunglasses and so the sunglasses like were not styled as part of the shoot until like the very last second and i just oh, loved, cool. i love that oh that's cool oh <laughs> Okay, you already talked about this. You already talked about this. Hellevator wants to know, how does it feel being in the strongest top three in the show's history? Oh, what? You guys were pretty epic, you know? Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Uh, that really means a lot because like I uh, I loved America's Next Top Model. Like growing up, that was a show that my, you know, I do have like some sort of attention um, <laughs> a uh, different kind of like different attention span like my attention is very so watching tv is not very easy for me like i have to be doing multiple things at once and i like when i was growing up my mom and i like we really didn't have a lot of tv shows that we would watch together because i just was not interested in like you know a lot of the tv that was out there um and then i watched when i watched america's next top model with her she actually watched the first season she was like you're gonna love this you should watch it with me and we, it ended up being the thing that we bonded over the most growing oh, up was watching America's Next Top Model. Yeah, so um, it means a lot that, uh, you know, it was a season that people enjoyed and that I did get uh, that far because like, look, dude, <laughs> I did not have that much modeling experience and I really did not think I was gonna get that far at all. So for me, like every moment on the show was a blessing. Like any second that yeah. I got longer, I really appreciate it. And at the end, I think they were kind of tired of that. The producers were like, Hannah, you just keep talking about how awesome everything is. <laughs> they were like, can we get like a different flavor from you? And I'm like, I can't, what can I say? I'm like vanilla here. Like, this is <laughs> awesome. Like, I just love this experience and I couldn't be more grateful, you know? And the people that were ungrateful at times, I was like, 
what are you doing? Stop, stop mm -hmm. complaining, like, enjoy this. And, you know, there is, there is that aspect of like, hurry up and wait that you just have to know, like, you have mm -hmm. to be prepared for that. Anybody who wants to get on TV or get into fashion and do runway shows or even photo shoots, at some point you have to hurry up and get some. Yeah, it, it, in this industry, you are going to have to hurry up and get somewhere to wait for hours and hours and hours. And sometimes you'll be in hair and makeup or sometimes you're waiting to get into hair and makeup and then you continue to wait and then you're on stage or you're on camera for this much time and then it's gone, right? So in that window of opportunity, you can't just complain you have to enjoy it and like try to be as present as possible because it's going to go by really quickly yes hannah that was a golden nugget all the girls need to dip in ranch and swallow that was here's a, a nugget for you fun, another to... fun fact for you actually i did a live with shea Coulee, winner of um rupaul's drag race all stars five and we did a top 10 photo uh, a top Ooh. 10 photo list of all time of top model, we both made our own list and you were actually on her list. Oh, that's so cool. I want to follow her. What's her, uh, can you send me her IG or like- Uh-huh, her name is Shake. I'll send it to you. But in, yeah, her, send it to me. in her, the photo she selected of you was the garbage photo. She said she loved it. Oh, oh mm -hmm. my God. So, okay, that was a really interesting one too because on, during that shoot, we get to uh, a location. We had no idea where we're going. They had the windows on the bus down. So we had no idea where we were going, just knew we were going uphill and the road started getting really bumpy. And then we get like, they open up the doors and we're on top of a landfill. And if you've never been to a landfill before, like it's, there's nothing like it until you have to, you realize then how important it is to uh, minimize the amount of trash that you, you, you consume or like that you, you make because, <laughs> Landmines are literally uh, compounded trash. Like they're mountains of compounded layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of plastic and garbage. And so they open up the doors of the bus. It, it, it smells terrible. And there's seagulls circling around, like feeding off of this trash. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like at any second, you could be shat on by a seagull, right? <laughs> and then all of the producers, everybody is wearing masks mm -hmm. except for the talent except for Nigel, uh, me, and like the girls, and uh, Mr. J. But the makeup artists, everybody, the, the film, film crew, they're all wearing masks. So we, we get into hair and makeup. Michael Cinco was really, really cool. I love the Philippines. That's another place I want to go. I would love to work with Michael Cinco again. I loved the makeup for that shoot as well. Like, seriously, if I could copy the makeup like that or like tattoo that on my face, I would. Because that was like... My, I felt so confident in that makeup. Mm -hmm. The dress was fantastic. And then I'm doing my photo shoot. Well, Nigel was like 20 feet back and there's bulldozers and there's seagulls. So it's really, really loud. I'm on a platform. I can't hear the camera clicking. So I'm just trying to move and like go into poses. And at this point I had built more experience through the show of doing photo shoots. So I was getting the hang of it and I was starting to kind of understand how to not internalize or overthink it too much and just kind of, you know, feel the dress and show the piece and work the angles and keep your neck tall and all the things that Mr. J had told us over time. Well, Mr. J comes running up to me and he's like, Hannah, stop second guessing yourself. I was like, what? And he was like, you're second guessing yourself. Stop doing that. And I was like, okay, thanks, Mr. J. Like, I have no idea what that means, but I'm going to keep... I couldn't hear the camera clicking, so I was just trying to move on my own. And so that self-doubt of like, am I doing this right? Am I, that's, you know, so all this, I don't know what it was. They, the producers took me aside for a second and they were like, how did it go? Um, no, remember earlier I told you, they asked the question, they asked the answer in the question that they want you to say, right? So they were like, why do you think you struggled on, on the platform? Mm -hmm. And I go, I don't think I struggled at all. And I told them, I feel great about that. <laughs> and I, re I remember the producer behind the camera looking at me like. Was it David? Because I had, no, it wasn't David. It was a lady. Mm. David might've been by her side, but it was this lady who was asking me this question. And I was like, no, I feel great about it. 
Mm -hmm. And then it ended up being like an awesome shot that they pulled. So I don't know, like you guys, I really do feel like, okay, this is something from this book too, A Course in Miracles, but you can write your own reality. All right. So especially in times when you're doing, when you're collaborating with people and like Mr. J came up to me and he goes, don't second guess yourself. And then when they asked me, why do you think you struggled? That's when I said, I don't, I didn't struggle. I was great. I felt awesome. And from that point, I don't know, I, it was kind of a click for me that you don't have to accept people's uh, negative uh, responses or negative feedback. You don't have to ex accept people's criticism. There's a lot of, of people who will try to throw shade on you because you're so bright, you know? And uh, yeah, that show was a really great experience for me of just like not accepting like the reality that they were trying to play. You know, reality is constantly changing and everybody's reality is different. And I just decided that my reality of that day was I did awesome. <laughs> and then I ended up having a great photo, so. I know that's right, Hannah. Oh, I love you, okay. I love you, I'm <sighs> so excited to meet you. This has been really fun. Jamie Benson wants to know, are, is there a photo shoot where you felt like you deserved best photo? And you've kind of thrown some out there where you feel like you should have got called first. You said Definitely. You... Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I, I'm sorry. That's part of my, like, attention thing. I, I, like, interrupt people sometimes. I'm really trying to get better at that. So um, but uh, so definitely the Michael Cinco one, the landfill one, I didn't get called first for that. So I feel like I should have gotten called first for that. I feel okay. like I also probably should have gotten called first or at least higher for the one that me and Brittany did. Okay. Um, and I feel like the mud shoot, they, that was another botched one. That was another sabotage one where they did not pick the f best photo. I feel like they wanted the brunettes to win because blondes always have more fun. So they figured they'd probably just let the brunettes have one. Mm -hmm. So, and mm. that's my... <laughs> And clearly, you know, I'm just kidding, right? I think being a brunette's awesome. I could never pull it off, but yeah, the blondes definitely should have won that one. And the fiercely roast one, you, because because in your reality, you think you got called first. In your reality, oh my gosh, yes. Now I've been corrected. In my reality, yeah, I wrote like in my reality. Speaking of fiercely roast and Kasha being called first, I forgot this question. I remember when I said, Kasha said she does not remember Brittany having a meltdown at all. And you said, well, I have a list of reasons on why that possibly, that could have happened. Do you want to list some of those things for us? Um, well, I mean, Kasha's a little older, so, you know, <laughs> memory loss. I'm just kidding. Um, no, I feel like maybe it was because she wasn't standing right behind uh, Brittany mm. as I... I feel like I was like experiencing the wrath of Brit of, of Tyra for at with Brittany because I was standing right behind her. But it is kind of strange that Kasha doesn't remember that. I don't know. I don't know. She just must have checked out. Maybe it was so traumatic, emotionally traumatizing for her that she just forgot. You know, it's and mm. it's tucked away in a part of her brain that has yet to be unpacked. Gotcha. Um, who had the most unfair elimination on your cycle? Kasha. Gotcha. Kasha. And and I feel Jacqueline got sent home too soon too. Or like, I don't know. Jacqueline, it was kind of like hers was kind of anticlimactic. I feel like mm -hmm. Kasha's photo was really strong that week on the camel. Um, and mine mm -hmm. was actually pretty bad. So I'm glad I didn't get sent home that week. Because Franca Sassoni like said to my face, I don't like the way your face looks. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm going home. The editor of Vogue Italia does not like the way my face looks. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I think she just meant the photo, not like like how it permanently looks. Right. Oh, <laughs> Pray. Pray. <laughs> Didn't she pass away? Yeah, R.I.P. Franca Sassoni. Yeah. She passed away. Yes. Rest in peace, mamas. Rest in peace. Um, recently too, right? I think like two years ago. Definitely pre COVID. Gotcha. Yeah, I was about to say it. Cause, okay, yeah, definitely. Rest in peace, Franca. Rest in peace, yeah. baby. Rest in peace. Um, <laughs> so PCS Mush is asking, Hannah Ruth was portrayed on the show as a crybaby. Did this have a negative impact on her image after the show? No. <laughs> no. People, like, uh, yeah, no, it didn't. Um, 
The, I mean, I feel like people ask me that from time to time, especially online. Like I get like a lot more international people asking me about that than like people in America mm-hmm. when I meet people in, in person. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I'm definitely an emotional creature. Um, and we kind of explained, we kind of touched on that earlier. Um, but it's, I mean, it's, it's, I'm in touch with my, a lot of my emotions, which can be really scary for some people. A lot of people avoid their emotions, but I kind of experience them. And sometimes I dwell in them and that's not good. Like to kind of like let an emotion become, become my personality. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of, yeah, that's where I am right now is just like being like, I am not my emotions, you know? So sometimes they happen and then I try to let them go and just kind of move on. Gotcha. Yeah. And here is my second to last question. (laughs) How did you get the role on, on the Disney show? This is from Elevator. Hi. So yes, I am Carrie on Austin and Allie. And that show was a really awesome experience that actually came after America's Next Top Model. Although a lot of people, when you watch them side by side, I look uh, like it, it feels like the Disney Channel show happened first, but it actually happened like three years after. And I had been living in LA for a year. Uh, I was doing YouTube videos. I did a, uh, a fun YouTube video with Lex. And the makeup artist on the shoot ended up being a cousin to a talent manager. And she said, you got to meet this girl. Uh, And the talent manager at the time had been representing Leo. And Leo had just gotten crazy stupid love like a couple years before. And so Leo had gone on to bigger fish uh, representation. She had gone to like CSA, uh, CSA, CSA or whatever the really big one is CAA and so uh this manager asked if I wanted to start auditioning for television and film and I was like yes please yes that that would be awesome and so I had three auditions in like my first week working with her um it went it started going really fast all of a sudden I was getting scripts like left and right and I was like oh my gosh this is crazy uh my my first three auditions were for huge roles like the first one was for uh, a Mark Wahlberg film and uh, Brie Larson ended up getting the part. So like I was already going up against really big talent. And the second thing I went for was the movie, The Giver and the uh, the role ended up going to Taylor Swift. And so the third role was for a Disney Channel show called Austin and Allie. And I loved the character. I really felt like I could relate with her. I dressed like the character. I went to the audition. I had a really awesome first read. Uh, they were laughing. Uh, they called me in for another audition, a callback. And then that Friday, I had a producer session. And Friday night, I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but I got a call from my manager, and all she said was, "You booked it." And I just wow. fell to the floor. I fell to the floor. I was like shocked because, mm-hmm. like, I just I like one of my biggest dreams like i'd always wanted to be on america's next top model but i'd always wanted to be on disney channel and that was really cool um so i was so excited because on monday morning that following monday i was at my first table read sitting next to ross lynch laura morano uh rainy rodriguez and kayla worthy playing my boyfriend uh and my my character went from a guest star meaning just one episode to a re recurring guest star so it was on two seasons, including the finale of the show. And it was amazing. It was awesome. Congrats. Hey, yeah. What else do you have going on, girl? Uh, so recently, uh, I just got hired. Um, and it's still kind of in the development process of playing Harley Quinn. Um, in You're a- lying. No, You're I lying. It's, it's for a, like, it's a YouTube series. So it's, it's. It's kind of, you know, it's, it's a fun, it's, uh, you know, a produced by a friend of mine who I met at Sundance a couple years ago. And he was like, it just occurred to me that you kind of, rep, uh, like, you kind of look like Harley Quinn. Do you want to play her? I was like, that would be so much fun. Yes, please. So um, we're still working on getting the costume right because the costume is kind of important um, to the character. And it's hard to find. If anybody has, like, a Harkham styled I think that's how you call what you call it. It's like the we're doing the red and black look. Like you can kind of tell I'm already trying to play the character. Um, yeah, doing my character research. Um, but yeah, so I'll be playing her in a series called uh, Superhero Diaries, and it's basically the the characters once they are off duty from fighting crime. 
And it's really fun because it's going to be just, you know, them like talking shop and how, you know, talking about their lives outside of like fighting crime and stuff. And I'm really excited. Hannah, are you serious? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be really fun. Um, I'm also, I also work with kids. I uh, teach, well, like actually I'm happy to teach anybody or answer anybody's questions if they wanna get into acting and modeling. Um, I've, ba I've basically been like a, a life coach for kids like since COVID started. I really, that's, that side job has picked up for me. Um, my side page is uh, HKJ Talent and Basically, you'll see all the kids that I've worked with, and I do my classes through Zoom. Um, I do private sessions. Um, so what I do is like basically I learn more about if the the young artist wants to do uh, what type of work they want to do, whether they want to act or model, or sometimes it's like you know you're creative, but you don't really know what you're what you want to focus on. So I kind of help you like find that journey and come up with like a game plan for you because a lot of it is planning and making making the right uh taking the right steps in the direction of your dreams and the direction of your career to make that happen so yeah if anybody wants some like private time with me um to work on your acting or modeling or anything uh related to the performing arts i really enjoy that i love seeing people get stronger in their own confidence to inspire others because I think that's really important. That's what it's about. Like that ripple effect of really growing together, glowing up together and spreading love and glitter everywhere. Hannah, I can't believe I've been talking to you for almost three hours now. I love it. Are you surprised at how much fun this has been? <laughs> yeah, I actually am. I'm, I actually am. Kind of I feel surprised. like you I yeah. am. I, really I feel like. Great time. Did you think I was gonna cry? Did you think I was gonna cry? Did well, you, you did kind of cry, Hannah. You did kind of cry. I did. You did. I you teared did. up. I had to. I, had to. I <laughs> promised. I promised I was going to. I said, bring the Kleenex. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to, you know. And that's the other thing too about being an actor is like I really don't like to stifle emotions because they're so important in the work that we do. As, and same with modeling. Like there are times mm -hmm. where they want me to look like vulnerable or angry or crazy, you know. So. Hannah. I love you. I love you too. Listen, I have one more question for you. If you were standing before Tyra Banks right now, like literally right now, what would you say to her? What's the password to the safe? <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Tyra? Tell me. This I would I would ask yeah. I would ask her to go to tea. Can we go can we get a happy hour, Tyra? Can I have some ice cream and hang out in my PJs with you? She just seems like such a cool lady and there was a lot of uh like times on the show where we were like, Where's Tyra? Like we really didn't get to hang out with her as much as we wanted to and you know, someone that popular is just hard to like, you know. She's everywhere. She's really cool. I totally respect mm -hmm. that lady. I respect you. I love what oh, you're doing. You. Don't ever stop. Keep glowing. Keep growing. And call me back. You hear? I am. Of course, you know. Of course. You have, listen, this has been three hours of the <laughs> most craziest, zaniest, most logical, magical butterfly droppings I've ever experienced. In butterfly my life. droppings. I love this that. This is amazing. Like this, I hope the children watch this 100 years from now. Well, yes. Yes, they will. And they will get a lot of great knowledge about sperm from it. <laughs> is there anything else you want to say before I let you go, Hannah? <laughs> um, have it. Have an awesome night. Um, all the people that are watching, uh, I love you guys. I think, you know, it's really important to remember that this is about you. Like the reason we all exist is because you guys are here. So you are really, really important to this whole journey. Like this whole experience would not have ever happened if you weren't here. So your love and support for Top Model and also for our journeys and being so supportive of the people afterwards has really made a career for me. So I could not ever be like, I couldn't ever tell you how grateful I truly am that you guys, uh, you know, are so cool and so fun. And, you know, I'm, I would love to keep in touch with all of you. I'm sorry. I don't res resp uh, respond to very many DMS, <laughs> but I do will respond to comments and things like that. So, 
Um, thank you so much. I love you guys. And Oliver and Cookie, you guys are so cute. Have a great night. You too, so Hannah. Ben Soba noodles for the win, all right? If you want some carbs, look up Soba noodles, okay? I promise you, you will never go back. Anna? <laughs> it doesn't, you will not realize that it's healthy. I promise, nope. try it. Not doing it. It isn't, it isn't ramen noodles, so. Not doing it. There's nothing not like ramen. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> all right, well, you are gonna go get a wax with me, okay? And we're gonna go get our eyelashes done. It's gonna be a crazy day, but we're both gonna have to do it. <laughs> I'm looking so forward to it. Everybody, Give Hannah Cat Jones hugs, kisses, hot dogs, donuts, candy, ice cream. <laughs> oh my God! As we think about her from getting an amazing, epic, I think the most epic chat of Cycle 16 we have had. Oh my God. Hannah Cat Bye. Jones, everybody. Bye. I love you. Bye. <laughs> Y'all, I need a couple of gummies. I need a drink. And I'm about to go rewatch Cycle 16 because <laughs> that was freaking amazing. Listen, this video will be uploaded to the Oliver Twix O L I B E T W I X T YouTube channel where you can watch this video and I think 90 other chats I've done with past contestants past judges and Eva Tyra and even and Eva and Eva hopefully one day even bring her ass over here and even Tyra Banks herself yes Tyra Banks called us folks you can go watch all that crap over there just turn it on just let it play I love you guys I love you guys so freaking much you guys are amazing I love you guys for your support I love you guys for your eyeballs I love you shout out to everybody who got badges let me see who got badge Randy Milan and Dancing Queen 24 I love you guys so much thank you guys so much for your support um, I don't know if we have a chat tomorrow. I have to chat my calendar. But if not, you know where to find out the information. You can see if we're having a chat on YouTube. But I'll always post it to my Instagram. So until next time, guys, be sure to pray, kegel, and cackle. I bet Hannah Cat Jones kegels. Something tells me that she is an aggressive kegler. Something, something is telling me this, <laughs> that Hannah Cat Jones kegels. To the maximum, okay? <sighs> I love you guys. Until next time. Bye.